All right, all right, y'all. Welcome to Hyper Game Dev. Today I'm going to be doing some animation in Godot. Uh, I did this walk animation yesterday. Uh, it went pretty well, and that's all I'm going to do today is more animating. Uh, so Godot has some great animation tools. Uh, we got these keyframes down here. Look at that walk cycle. So I'm going to get a run in there. Uh, in this game, you can hurt your legs and break them off. And uh, so when just one leg is broken, I want to get an animation where you're hopping. So let me show you what that's like. If I can get the obstacles, here comes up a boulder right here. There, see our, our legs are getting hurt. Here's a house. Break those legs. I healed a little bit. I walked over some, some healing items. Let's see. There's one. So now we got one leg, right? So I want an animation just for this, where it's like you're like hopping along. And then if you lose both your legs, well now you go need to walk with your arms. I'd love to get an animation for that. So you're like dragging yourself across the ground. So this is what I want to do today. Uh, just give me a couple minutes. We're gonna get started. Thank you for joining in. And uh, yeah, let's hop a game dev, baby. We can't get over this. Oh man, we don't have to. I want a climbing mechanic so you can climb out of a hole like that. That's my dream. That's my dream. We'll get there. How y'all doing? Y'all all right? I'm getting everything set up. Sometimes I run a little late and usually I just wait to start the stream, but you know, I just start getting started. I'm trying to get just start getting started. And if I'm late, we say starting soon. I just put some text up there. But I'll make something fancier. You know I will. I really like that walk animation. Ready. Make sure you leave a thumbs up on this video. Thank you for doing that. It means more people will see this live stream and be notified about it. And will also get recommended the video more after I go live. Thank you if you're able to do that. I do see we're having a few internet issues right out of the gate, which is just the reality these days. So if you notice some quality drops, you know, you're like, I thought I said it's 1080p. Why is it going down to 144? I apologize. On behalf of my internet, I apologize. We're looking into some alternative options. But for now, just once in a while, it's just a little flimsy. All right. I think I'm about ready to get started here. Let me just make sure I got chat set up. All correct. Jiggity bum bum boo 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 boo. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, y'all. Let's do this Godot thing. What's up, y'all? I'm here for real. It's really me now. It's a real stream. Don't worry, it's real. I didn't make it up. I'm really, I'm really streaming live. And today, let's do some animations. Let's get right into it. Now, I want to put the internet uh, bit rate up here. I want to make this fancier too. So it's just like a little more, you know, nice looking. But right now, this so basically, I stream at 15,000 kilobits per second. That's how much video data I send out to you. Um, and you'll see it drops much below 15,000 sometimes. Uh, that's just because. Well, our internet is a little dookie head. Um, but 
I'm, what I'm, I'm looking into, I'm looking into, um, I'm looking into AT&T Air. That's what I'm looking into. Uh, I switched to AT&T and it wasn't better. So I think there must be something wrong with like our cabling underground by our house, which is like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do about that? What am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> uh, so I think the alternative is going to be, uh, is gonna be just try some cell phone tower. That's what the AT&T thing is, cell phone tower internet. It's not gonna be as fast as the internet we're supposed to be getting right now. Obviously this fast internet has its problems, but, but, at the very least, at the very least, uh, I'll be able to, you know, stream without drops. We'll see. Anyway, let's do some animating. That's what I want to do today. That's what I'm here for. So let's do it. I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I'm going to look for run cycle animation. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you already knew Google and then what is this like a jump we also do have a jump we could do a jump as well what is this goofy run this run is a little goofy I kind of like a regular run although this character is kind of goofy wow there's a lot of variety here I like this uh, this website it has some good drawings And then this one is a little more. It's like a it's like a harder run. It's like running even harder. Oh wow. Look at this. I like that this already kind of has like a 3D thing going on. That's kind of nice. Okay. And I could kind of get into this. And so then they're also saying here with like twisting, none of the none of the counter positions have the same silhouette. None what is what are we even talking about counter positions? That's interesting. That's very interesting. All right, so I kind of, I mean, I like how this has like this graph on it. It's got like this, like these like colored dots that go up and down. It's kind of nice. But I think I like, I like this a little better. Let me keep looking for some others. I really liked the one I used yesterday for the walk cycle. But it, I don't know that it has the same. Oh, and this one's a short kind of run cycle. Contact, passing, kickoff, up. I kind of like how simple this is. We're kind of going to be on our own for the hop, but that'll be fun. I feel like after doing the walk and after doing the run, you know, maybe it'll be a little more obvious how to. Oh, Jesus. important security oh, get message. Get out of my face! What the your monkey? Your computer has been locked okay. up. Okay. Okay. Your IP address was used without your knowledge or consent to visit websites that contains identity theft virus. To unlock the computer, please call support immediately. Oh, shut your please mouth! Please do not attempt to shut down or restart shut your, your computer. Shut your little stupid mouth! Doing that may lead to get data loss face. and identity theft. Get out of my face! The computer face. lock is aimed to stop illegal activity. Shut your mouth! Please call our support immediately. Important security message. Really? Your computer has been locked up. Oh no! Your well, IP I better address call was these people. Your knowledge oh or shoot! To visit I better email them right now. Identity theft virus. Oh man, I'm gonna be in trouble to if I don't do the what computer, they say. Please call support immediately. Who do you think I am? Please do not attempt to shut down or restart your computer. Please do not do, do the thing that will data. help. Do not do the thing that will get me to shut up. Whatever you do, whatever you do. Honestly, what what makes me upset about that is not that it like was annoying. It's that people will fall for that. People will fall for that, man. Like 
it's sad. It's sad. It's sad that that's even... I will... That, well, that's... Well, I guess I'm not using Pinterest anymore. <laughs> Look, the last time I used Pinterest, it wasn't that bad. But it is now, so... Is this the, like, original website for this stuff? Or is this, like, a different one? Oh, that's probably a different one. I like all these, like, blogs that are, like, for animating 3D stuff that are just using this as a reference. I mean, it, there's a reason why it's popping up. Because it's a good one. Because it's a good one. Okay. So they're saying this is a five-drawing run. I'm going to do I'm going to do this one. And I think we'll be okay. So we have to do it for each leg, right? So this has more. What we did yesterday had four steps. So let me just let me just get that. It was actually a little different than this one. The one I followed yesterday was actually by this, it was the same art style here. I'm surprised it's not coming up right away. Like, why would I have used something that's so far down in the search? I don't know. Apparently I did. Let's see if this page has more. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Why are all these websites so sus? I mean, this is, I guess, what you get for searching Google Images. I like Google Images. I like Google Images. It appeals to my visual brain. Or my visual learning. But I do wish I could find. I just can't do the. I did the same one. Run. Like I didn't type anything too different here. Certainly, it didn't vanish from the internet. And even if it did, I feel like it would still kind of appear up here. Ooh, this one's kind of nice. It's a little aggressive. It's Pinterest. It's Pinterest. I don't know. We'll just open the image. Where is that one that I had yesterday? I'm looking for it. I'm going to work all day if I have to to find that one. Now, specifically, it was a walk cycle, but I didn't search walk cycle. This is the art style again. See if this link is trying to destroy my computer. Is this the one I used? This is the one I used. At least at least it was very similar to this. I don't know if it was this exact version of the image. This is nice. So really it was it was this, but it was like half of this. I guess it wasn't four. I guess it was five steps. Why did I think it was four? I don't know. I'm not sure why I thought it was four steps, but it wasn't. Oh, this is a this is like a class class. It's like a class class. It's like a real class. It's like academia.edu class. Um. No, no naughty internet. Hey, what's up, Neil? Welcome back. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping in. I'm doing only animating today. I'm going to animate a run. I'm going to animate a hop run. I'm going to animate a crawl. I'm just doing some animation in Godot today. And I wanted to um, find a good reference. I wanted to find the reference I used yesterday. I don't, I mean, I guess I found it at this point. So this is what I used for the walk cycle that I put into effect yesterday. Uh, so these were all the keyframes that we ended up with. 
The walk cycle looks smooth. It looks good. I'm so happy with it. I'm like amped to do more. I'm amped to do more. So this is how it turned out. It looks really good, I think. Uh, and the feet are kind of clipping with the numbers. These numbers aren't where it's going to stay anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, so I want to do a, a run. So right now we're walking. So if I speed up here, right, we're still going the same speed. So I want that run to go faster. Hey, Psychonic, didn't it turn out so well? Like, what? What? I know, I'm, I'm amazed. So I'm, I'm going, I'm gonna geek, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do more uh, animations. I'm gonna do a run cycle, so we're gonna get, so this has a run. And then I want, so when we are missing a leg, so let's break a leg off. I want to do a one-legged hop, which will be a little different because I won't have a reference as much. So that'll be kind of interesting. Uh, and then, I mean, if you think about it, it'll be kind of similar to this because, like, when they were walking here, you can kind of see that you can kind of imagine the second leg is there. So just take out the keyframes that have that second leg coming in, and then it'll just be like a hop. And then maybe you go a little higher or something, but, like, not as far. I don't know. Uh, and then I also want to do a crawl. So when you lose both of your legs, you're going to use your arms. And it's actually going to be, well, so this is the kind of thing. I, I'm i not sure how the crawl, I mean, because part of the game is that you grab things with your arms. And if, you know, well, we just got our leg back. If you only have, so if you have two arms, do you use both arms to walk? Or do you just use both arms to walk unless you're grabbing and then you have to slow down? Probably that. So there's a lot of like coding things that come into question there that still need to be added into the game. But yeah, so I want to do something where when you break both of your legs off and you're crawling, uh, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to think of is I guess I want an animation for if you're crawling with one arm or if you're, and or if you're crawling with one arm. Um, so, so yeah, I think I'll do both animations. And, you know, in terms of setting the conditions for when each of those happens. So here we'd, we'd have both arms and we'd be crawling. <laughs> we got our leg back. Um. But you know, if you're gonna grab something and throw it, if you're if you're engaging your other arm, you can't crawl with that arm. So we'd also have to have it switch to the other animation. Now that's that's a little further down the line, some of that, but uh, you kind of get the idea. Googling stand still jump animation reference give good results for a one-legged hop. Really, that's helpful. That's helpful. Okay. This walk cycle I did yesterday had five steps. And then this run cycle has a couple extra steps. This is a walk. So that that's just good to keep in mind. It's gonna be a little extra to get that run, but that's all right. So I think this is what I'll follow here. What is this saying? Connor, Com Com Comber, contact, contact. The down, passing, wait, what is this one? This one just doesn't have a name. This one just doesn't have a name. I guess it's like another down. It's like down part two, this is up part two. That's probably more what it is. So we have contact, down, down part two, passing, up, up part two, contact. So we have to do this one. And then you're saying that if we Google Oh, there's also this this also has like this other like more extreme run. I don't really know which one's more extreme. This one feels very like like whatever that guy who did all the Looney Tunes, Chuck Norris, Chuck Wagon, Chuck Chuck Looney. No, no, not really Chuck Looney. Sorry. I, <laughs> sorry, sorry Chuck. I didn't mean to Chuck Jones. It's giving me Chuck Jones. Those ones are so goofy. Yeah, yeah, it's giving Chuck Jones is what I'm getting from it. Uh, one of some of this, some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, this is this is really silly. So I'm not feeling it. Uh, but this one seems like one we can follow. 
well enough. I don't think there's anything else on this page. Somebody did show one of their... That's okay, we don't need it. It's fine. Okay, and then get close that. Does this have anything good on it? Oh yeah, this was this was this was basically what we did, except this one has all of the positions, but we don't really need that. This is for a walk cycle anyway. Oh, and then there's this one. This one's not bad. And it's more like arm centric, I guess. I don't know. What the hell's the difference between these? I mean, this one feels like a little speedier. Like it's reaching a little far further. It's a little more extreme. So I think I want to focus. I feel like this one will look good. But maybe this one. It's a little tough. Uh, so you were saying search for Stand still jump animation reference. I love the different ways people search for things. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. How did you even come up with this? This is perfect. What? This is perfect. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh, come on, WordPress. Just let me open it. Why you gotta be like that? I know why you gotta be like that. Neutral anticipation. Wow, this is perfect. Yeah, this is really good. Awesome, let's go. Great. All right, well, we're off to the races then. Let's do some animation. Let's do some animation. Uh, as you can see, the internet is wobbling a little bit. I'm trying to keep a good eye on it and the quality. So hopefully, hopefully it behaves. Let's go. Let's get to it. Uh, and I did name this run. I did name this run, but it's not really a run. So I think I should rename it, which is probably, well, it's certainly going to mess up code. Can I rename it? Certainly I can rename it. I mean, we could just keep it named run if I have to. Oh, rename, there it is. Uh, we're gonna say walk one. Now I gotta go to the code and update it in this one place and everything should be fine. And yeah, the animation in Godot is really smooth. The 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 worst part is that it's a little buggy. So we have to make sure we save often because it can get crashy. So just gotta keep that in mind. I don't know which one I want. Like this one feels a little too exaggerated, but I don't know. I kind of like this one. I think I want to try this one. I want to do this one. Uh, let me get, I'm going to get my reference pure ref software open just so I can have it on the screen with me and not alt tab all day. Sometimes alt tabbing is just too much. All right. Less ago. So we're going to create a new, no, I got to figure out where to put this thing. We're going to create a new animation. I'm sure momentarily. Yeah, I guess right behind me here is a good place. It's a little small though, a little small. All right, let's say that. And this is just of course doing one side. So we got the right leg going down, right leg going back, right leg going back, right leg in the back, right leg in the back, right leg in the back. So we'll have to do the, the other side as well. All right, new animation. Animation, new, and this will be run one. So first things first, I'm gonna put down, I'm gonna grab the skeleton here. 
and I'm going to hit edit bones up at the top. I think it's edit bones, edit mode. Uh, I'm going to hit control S right now. Sometimes pressing this causes chaos. So I'm going to press this button here, insert key, all bones, create new tracks. Now we've got a track for every bone. There's one more track I want to make, and that's the uh, vertical position. Now, wait a minute. We're up in the air already. I didn't realize that. Oh, so I animated the other one a little too low sometimes. See how we're walking on the blue line here? But by default, I'm actually standing above the blue line. Hmm. I could, I could move the alien down all the time to be on the blue line. Then the collision's going to be a little more messed up. And we're going to sink m way more than I want. Unless, and this might be a blessing in disguise, because on each of these ground collisions, I actually have it set to negative 0.2 because we were floating a little bit. What are the numbers? What are the numbers? Uh, which numbers? Which ones do you mean? So I'm going to bump up the, um, the collision on these and see if maybe this is actually what I've always needed was to get the character a little lower so I don't have to bring this collision down. This might be what the the answer I've been waiting for. Maybe. Of course, if I if I'm wrong, I now have to change all these. But you know, I want to get this out of the way now before we have a lot more. If dude, if I can get this out, see, this is this is what I need to do. I should do this anyway. Zero, because otherwise, one, two, three, four. I have to do this for every single terrain block. And right now, there's only six terrain blocks. But someday, there's going to be more. But yeah, which numbers do you mean, uh, Neil? There's numbers so many places. All right, let me see. Oh, I know what numbers you mean in the game. That's the health of each limb. So I mean, I don't want to keep... Oh, this looks perfect. I don't want to keep the numbers there in the long term. We are kind of sinking in the ground a little bit. Uh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. So these are kind of for debug purposes for now. But ultimately, these are the health of each limb. So in this game, the main mechanic is that you are trying to protect your limbs from getting injured. So here we have no leg now because that went down to zero. So you get four hit points to start with. And then, you know, I just ran into that boulder. I ran into this house. So the leg number went down. If I hit this tree, now my arm number went down to three. Uh, and then once that gets down to zero, at the moment, uh, the limb disappears. And so does the collision. Uh, I, I would want more of an animation in there or something, but this is what we got so far. So there it disappears. And then if you, like, for example, lose both of your legs, uh, you will fall to the ground and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, so that's... And then if you lose all the points on your body, uh, then you just die and the game starts... Uh, right now, the game just starts over, but... So that's what the numbers are. Uh, I do want to have a better UI than these numbers, but... Uh, they kind of get the job done for now, so yeah. All right. I and I gotta say that collision looks really good. Uh, I think that one of the feet still does kind of sink down, and we spawned in a hole. Actually, no, that looks fantastic. No, it looks great, dude. Dude, this is the solution I've been looking for all along. We're in good shape. All right, cool. Let me get back to the animating. I just, I had to make that change. That was an important change. Okay, back to the animation. Select run one. Uh, and then I want to create, so we, we're going to create a track for the armature, the whole thing. Uh, so to do that, I'll come over here to the position because I might change that position. Right now it's saying we're at 0 0.07. What is that like at zero? Oh, that's way too low. Yeah, okay, we don't want that. 
So that's going to be our baseline. What's our baseline over here? 0 0.07. Okay. I think, right? Yeah. So 0 0.07 looks like when the character's on the ground, that's the number that we want. And then I'm going to add this as a keyframe. So it's going to create a new track. So now we've got the armature position track and all of the bones. We got a track for all the bones. All right. Now let's animate. So last time I started with the uh, I don't I don't know I I don't I'm not sure how I feel like they're not gonna blend into each other. So that'll be interesting. I think there is a way to set it. I'm sure there is a way to set it up to do it that like that, but we'll have to look into it. Um, so I'll just start, I'll just start right off from contact. We'll just start from one. All right. Okay. No problem. Oh, bones. I can do this. I can do this. We have all the bones over here on the right. And we want to make sure we're in edit mode. Hit save now. And then let's do the first position. So on this first one, we've got the right leg, the heel on the ground, kind of comfortably. I found that doing the thigh and the foot are the ones that are the most useful to uh, modify for the way this has been built. So we want to be kind of lower. We definitely want to be lower here for this because the leg isn't going to make it. Sometimes the leg, if I need like a knee bend, the leg can help. And then the back foot needs to be up. It's already kind of bent on its own. So then I'll use the leg to just bend it more. And then we want the foot to be kind of at like an angle like that. Oh, this is going to be funny. I'm like very excited for how this is going to turn out. All right, so then I'm going to get the armature. I'm going to select the armature and then push it down. So I didn't really need to set it at the default place, but it's good to now I know. It's now it's good that now I know. And it's 0 0.07. All right, bring it down to the heel is like touching like that. Oh, the arms. Oh, yeah, the arms. Let's do the arms. I'm just going to do the keyframes now. Okay, good. We didn't crash. And we can override it, and that'll be fun. So for the arms, we have the right arm. I haven't actually animated these yet. Whoa. Oh, we have to make sure we click on edit mode. Because if I don't click on this edit mode up here, so right here, if I don't click on this, then this gizmo is going to be on the whole thing. But if I click on that, now it's only going to be modifying that which I chose. Uh, doing the shoulder, I feel like the shoulder is a bit risky business because it might tear. So I'm going to try to avoid doing the shoulder as much as possible. Wow, but we really got to kick this arm way back. Oof, I mean, we have to. I can't, I can't avoid it too much. So wait, how does an arm, so an arm, I mean, this isn't, this is, this is a weird alien and it will move weirdly, but, oh man. What does this look, how bad does this look from the back? Is this the back or the front? That looks like the front. Let's say front view. Here we go. Oh, see what I mean? You see all that tearing happening in there? That's because of the way that it's built right now, which is not ideal. So, uh, we can we can work with it. It's going to be a little, I feel like this is going to animate very strangely because it's going to be, and it's still going to tear along the way. So I'm going to, I'm going to not do it this way. 
<laughs> but if I just do like the arm, yeah, this is much better. Then you don't get any tearing. Yeah, that's the way we should do it. How, f how much can I do before it starts tearing? A little bit. We can do a little bit. And I do want to update the model so that's less of a problem. But right now, there it just is the way it is. Yeah, there's really not much we can do. That's okay. Good to know. This is what we're dealing with. So we, of course, want this to go much further back. Uh, now the hand, it says hand, but, you know, it's kind of the other part of the arm. So we could even say, we should probably do it more like this, right? This is gonna look so funny. Uh, and we wanna say front view. <laughs> it's so funny, it's so crooked, it's so flailed. The flailing is hilarious, I love it. It's adorable. Now we could also rotate it so it's less of a flail, but I say we embrace the flail. I say we embrace it, you know? Let that goofy alien be goofy. If it wants to be goofy, let it be goofy. All right. <laughs> Plus the less, you know, little changes I make, the better it's gonna animate. All right, and then the other arm is like pumping forward. I also didn't do any arm animation for the walk cycle, so that would be something to go back and do as well. Okay, so we've got arm left. This one is like pumping. We can probably just do the hand. <laughs> Looks like we want this pointing down a bit. Yeah, nice. It's kind of got like a little nice shape to it. All right, let's do the next one. Oh, I forgot to, <laughs> shoot. I forgot to save it. I forgot to keyframe it. That's all right. That's all right, it's practice. I'm gonna, you know, and you know what? I'm gonna veto doing, no, we should do the shoulder as much as possible. No, I think the shoulder is too risky. Don't do the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first, it's the first one. It's the first one. I gotta learn the mistakes that I'm gonna need to be aware of. <laughs> oh no. Let me just see how that looks from the back. <laughs> looks great. And then the left one, and it's always faster, you know, the second time. Oh, we don't want to do this. No, no shoulders. Shoulders are off limits. Off limits. And then bring that up. And hit the keyframes button. All right, now we've keyframed it. Next step. The down, but not too far down. Uh, also, the position. We need to put the position. I forgot to do the position. So we come to the armature. And we just drag it down until that foot is touching. And then I'm going to keyframe that over here. Just like that. Now we're in the right place. Okay. Next one, the down, but not too far down. So for this one, we want to be lower than the last one. But we want, and we achieve that by bending this right leg or the front leg in this case. So I'm going to go back to Skeleton 3D. I'm going to hit save. Hey, right, that's another thing. Got to make sure I save it before I hit keyframes because it'll reset all the keyframes. There's a lot of little quirks. There's a lot of little quirks. But overall, I'm really happy with the Godot animation tools. I've used much worse animation tools. <laughs> so I'm, I'm okay with it. Just got to learn the quirks. So, um, Yeah, so let's get the... The arms are actually very similar. It seems like the legs 
are where a lot of the change happens. So we're going to bring this down. But really, I want the leg to be bent quite a bit more. The foot is like a little less than flat, like you're almost on your tip toe. You're not on your tip toe, you're like on the ball of your foot or whatever. It's tough because this is going to push me up more. So we actually, I got a man, and I actually feel like I need to, okay, let me just save these keyframes. I actually need to bend the whole character forward. How am I going to get this? This is, okay, we'll get there. So I'm going to do the entire armature and I'm going to, so we're going to actually need to create a new key for our new track for rotating forward. Um, yeah, maybe like that. I don't know. I wouldn't, I guess it rotates forward a little bit more. It's kind of hard to tell. I, is it going, is it like angling further? They're kind of all at the same angle, honestly. The angle doesn't really seem to change, if I'm being honest. But we do need to be angled, so I need to fix that. So we're going to add the rotation track. I'm going to move the position back up. Keyframe that. OK. And then that stays the same. Now somehow I got to get that to be lower. Come to the bones. Hit a save, edit bones, and for the right leg, I really need it to be bent more. But it's a little tricky because we need to end up lower. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I think we need it more like this. I think that's what we need. And then we can bring the, the character down a bit. And then the back leg is less bent back. It's just down a little more. And the arms are kind of outstretched more. They're not like as tight. They're kind of looser. Actually, the, the top part of it is almost higher, but then the second half of the arm is like a little looser. These, man, these run cycle animations are amazing. And then this part of the arm is actually a little lower. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Because it's like, it's kind of keeping this like even bar between. It's like they're one, they have like one, I can't even do it, but... <laughs> <laughs> like a like a vector like one vec straight vector okay and then flare that out a little bit it looks pretty good i'm gonna hit the keyframes hit save let's see what we got let's see what we got let's ping pong it and play it not bad Oh, I forgot to move it down. I'm like, something isn't right. We need to move it down. So I'm gonna click on the armature, bring it down. And I'm gonna hit a position keyframe. And the rotation isn't really changing. I mean, it's almost more upright. I kind of want to change it just on principle of doing something that a little different. <laughs> I don't know. Just like to add variety. Maybe that's a mistake. And that'll let us get a little lower. For whatever that's worth. Okay, so we should have a key for rotation and position. And let's see how that plays as it is. Okay. All right. They're, so they're kind of subtle in their differences. I'm excited to see how it plays out. All right, next one is 
what does that say? In 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 between. In between. All right, this is the in between. So now we're actually bringing the right foot like all the way into the back. I almost feel like we should I feel like I'm not bringing the leg down enough. No, it's fine. <laughs> so we actually want to bring the leg all the way back. So I'm going to click on the skeleton. I'm going to grab the right thigh. Whoops. Oh, edit mode, edit, edit mode right there. Got to be in there. And so now it's actually all the way straight at this point. And we go, we go back to actually the same height about a little bit higher than before. And so this foot's going to be up on its tip. And so I actually don't want this to be bent. I'm going to unbend it first. What is, is it at its default? So the rotation is on this axis. Oh, default is not what we want. All right, this is fine. And then I'm gonna bring it back. It's got a little bend on it, but barely. And we do want to be going up, so we'll let it sink under the blue line for now. And then with the left, we can pull this one forward. Now this one needs to be tucked up really high, so we want a lot of bend on this one. And we want it to be kind of close inward. Whoa, cool. It looks good. I'm just going to rotate it till it's at its like highest point there. Okay. I'm going to hit the keyframes, save it. And then we do the arms. So we they're kind of close, they're way close, they're super different. So now we want the arms to be down at the side. Much looser. I didn't move the shoulder, did I? Man, I'm gonna forget that. Can I like, I wish I could mark this somehow. I'm gonna forget about the shoulder. Well, we'll know. We'll, the animation will play and, and the arm will be separating from the body if I've done any shoulder stuff. I guess I could always look here and I could just make sure I remove all of those keyframes. I probably should leave them though. If I'm being honest. I don't know. I'm not sure what these lines mean down here. Like, cause it, it doesn't mean one of the two things that I would think it could mean. I could think it either means these lines that like join the keyframes. Like it could either mean that it's the same between these frames, because I didn't do anything to the head, but I also didn't do anything to the neck. So it doesn't mean that. It could mean that there's a change between them. But again, I didn't do anything on the head, so why would that be all lines? I don't know, it's a little weird to me, but whatever. Whatever. I just really want to make sure I'm not moving the shoulder. Let me just go, no, let's finish the arm and then I'll check it. We can check it after. Select the skeleton, make sure we're in edit mode. Get the left arm. The left arm, again, it's just much more, oh, the right arm, sorry. It's much more relaxed. Not the shoulder, don't touch that shoulder. Bring this down. Hand is a little straighter. Now that is colliding with the leg, which, I mean, 
oh well. I'll try to wrap it around a little bit, but there's only really so much I can do there. Okay. Keyframe it. No crash. Hit save. And then let me look at it from behind and just make sure we're not getting any separation. Yeah, it looks okay. All right. We avoided accidentally animating the shoulder this time. All right, all right. This isn't bad. Oh, and then the position. So I'm gonna grab the armature and I'm gonna push this up. For all the internet fluctuation, at least it's not going down yet. My partner's pinpointed that it might be around three and five, between three and five, that the internet gets worse, which is surprising to me. Because I never noticed a pattern in when it happens. Oh, the arm is kind of going below the ground there. Uh, let me keyframe this position. I would say rotation-wise, we're kind of like more upright a little bit. I haven't personally noticed it be at a certain time, but now that my partner mentions it, I'm like, maybe it is. And if that's the case, that means that's probably somehow actually the internet service provider. So even though I thought I ruled that out, there's a lot of reasons why maybe I didn't rule it out. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do mobile tower internet. We'll see. Anyway, I'm impressed that it's doing so much, but it isn't killing the stream. It's just probably bringing the quality down. Uh, so anyhow, shoulder right. I want this hand or arm or something to just not be, oops, got to do edit mode, to not be colliding with the ground, please. All right, save the bones. Looks good. Let's play it. Cool. It looks like it goes under the ground a little bit there. D is play, S is stop. I'm just gonna make this shorter for now so it's just easier to Easier to test. Right there, look at that. That's way too far down. <laughs> That's where, that is, that is not okay. Uh, so I think one thing that can help is moving the position back. Now I do notice there's a lot of very annoying snapping that happens. So like it's actually not letting me do anything in between these two. I'm not really sure what to do about that. Make easing selection, duplicate transposed, add rest values, go to next step, delete selection, bake animation, optimize. Yeah, I don't see like a way to change that. Oh, snap, it's right here. Let's go. Oh, bring it down for mama. That's what we're talking about. Yes. All right, let me pull that back. See if that helps it a little bit. So there we're up here. We go down and then we come up. It's a lot better. I can live with that. It's looking good. Let me hit a save. Now let's keep on keeping on. Loving the snap discovery. Thank goodness. That was kind of bothering me. All right. Uh, next one is the high, not too high, 
Not too high. All right. I won't. So for this one, that back leg. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out like how I feel like we need to be leaning forward more in this in the the in between. Otherwise, I'm not going to have much room to go higher. So I'm going to re-keyframe those. Which means I should probably replace this keyframe. Okay, it looks fine. And then for the high, not too high, get the skeleton. I'm going to hit save. Go into edit. I want that front right leg. I guess we really want that foot to like be kind of at a point. But see, then it's going to be bent. We don't want it to be bent too much. But you see, it's like I don't have a lot of room to actually make it higher unless I tip forward more. Because the leg is actually supposed to be way out here. This is going to be a little tricky. Uh, if I do the whole armature a little more upright. We're just we're just like not actually higher, though. Uh, I could try doing the pelvis. We don't have to worry about separation there. Edit mode. We're going to compare. That was over the pelvis. But see, then we just. This is a tough one. You know, and, and if you look at the drawing, I mean, this this leg is stretched out like they drew this leg longer. This leg is considerably longer than that one, which means I mean, I could do that. I could stretch the leg out, right? I don't know. I'm kind of opposed to that. Even though these limbs are supposed to be stretchy, I don't know. I feel weird about it. So I'm 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 not going to do it. But maybe I should. We'll see. Uh left thigh is going to be kind of out. I guess really it's the bend. It's going to come forward a bit. Almost like it's like pointing straight. Like a flat kind of table thing. And then this foot will be pointed. A lot of little decisions to make here. It's it's just it doesn't it feels like it's like not exaggerated enough. Uh oh, there's the crash. See, sometimes when you click those keyframes, it crashes. But it's okay. I've been I've been saving it. And thanks to Psychonic Joe yesterday, I realized I realized that it doesn't get rid of the animations. It just changes the one that you're on. So we're okay. I wasn't feeling good about that either. I wasn't feeling good about it, so maybe it was for the best. Maybe. <laughs> Hold on, let's just let's just keep a keep a prayer. Put a prayer out there. Might as well. Better safe than sorry. All right. Uh, or you were saying, or you were saying, you were saying, in regards to me thanking you. You were saying, you were saying, bless up. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, so pull up the animation. Uh, I think we have the fix that I put in there to make it 
Yeah, I think so. It goes a little eclipse under. I, mean, I might as well fix it more. <laughs> I might as well fix it more. Let's push that armature up. I mean, this one's really just going to be so much higher than the high point. And I guess I could fix that. You know what I could do too? I could make the, let me go to the skeleton, edit bones, and the right leg. I could like bend it more. It doesn't really give me a lot more, but it'll give me maybe a little bit more height. Push this down just a teensy. Make that the position. And then I need to record the bone keyframes. Just to maybe give it a little more to work with for the next one. So now for this next one, if I do hit save, if I do the right foot, Oops, got to be on edit mode. And then I have a little more room to sort of bring this down. But it's hard because what you want to do is like kick this leg back a lot more. I think it's okay. It's tough. And then the left thigh, we bring it way up. Straighten out that bend. And like we kind of want it almost like flat, like parallel with the ground. which this is not. Uh, the foot needs to be bent more. It's a little tricky to get this to be just like that picture. You know, it's using the bones that I have available. I would say we can deal with a compromise and that'd be okay. Use it as guidelines. I mean, that needs to be way higher, much higher. I just am trying not to infringe on the later positions. Probably don't need to worry about that. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit the keyframes. No crash, love it. As for the arms, uh, the front right arm is actually now in the f in the f in front of the character, so that's switched. It's kind of a lazy arm. It's not trying too hard. Oops! I did the shoulder. Gotta be careful. So it's kind of a loose bend here. And then the back arm, no shoulder, is like this. And we'll bend it, we'll tuck it in a bit, like that. It's a weird pose. It's a weird pose. Uh, put down the keys, move the armature up. We don't have much. I wish we could go higher. Oh, and then the angle, so we could I mean, really, we have to go up and down more for it to be anything close to higher. Uh, take down the position and the rotation. And let's, let's see how it is. Let's see how it is. Might be okay. It's a little higher. It, it goes up a little bit. It's not, it's not a big high, but I mean, I guess the high is happening sooner.
But we are about to like, it's weird because like for the jump off the ground part in these drawings, the head is like almost at the same level. It does go up, but not much. But this is where I'm gonna have the most space to push it up. So I might fudge that a little bit and that might be a mistake on some level, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. All right, next set for this one, the back leg or the front leg on the right, in this case, needs to go way back. Select edit mode, so we're doing it on a per bone basis. Kick it way back. I wonder how much doing the pelvis will make a difference, a little bit. And we do want quite a bend on that foot there. It's a little tricky since it's such a non-conventional leg. Okay, and then the uh, back leg. I want. It's not that different from the other one. I'm gonna pull up the arm now so I can actually see it. Uh, the right arm is higher. Let's just do that. As for the back leg, we want it to be up like this. Try to bend the knee. It might not really look like a knee. Might be better just to keep that flat and then bring the foot down. So maybe something like that. Uh, I feel like the right arm is looking good like that. I don't think I need to change it much. I guess versus the other one, the the bend is a little more subtle. And then the back arm, did I do the shoulder? Did I modify the shoulder? I don't know if I did. I did, I modified the shoulder. Gotta be careful, gotta be careful. So we gotta redo that. Gotta be careful. I could copy this shoulder position and then redo and then paste that on here. Then I don't have to redo the leg. Okay, that's better. So we need to bring the arm up. I'm gonna forget that shoulder off then. I wish I could mark it somehow. I guess I could rename it in Blender. But I just wish I could like, you know, I don't know, label it red or something. Okay, and then the back arm, no shoulder. This one's kind of bent down a little bit. Neil just heard the most fire song ever, ever. What is it? Uh, what kind of music do you like? I'm sure we'll find out. I love that moment though. I love that moment of like, the worst is when I hear it and I can't like identify it. The world is revolving. But somebody is singing Mega Man. Jevil? Jeevil? 
Je evil? I can't listen to it on stream. It's too risky. <laughs> and now we just get deep articles. Sounds like a rare one. Sounds like you're listening to a rare song. Wherever it is, it's rare. Is it like chiptune? Uh, okay, so that hand looks pretty good. It's weird because, especially from this angle, it just looks like a mess. Uh, and then I'm gonna, it's kind of chiptune. It's a mashup. I love mashups. All right, let me do the keyframes. We got it. No crash. I love mashups. I love making mashups. I don't do a great job, but I try. That sounds like a very entertaining experience to like hear a song, like kind of like what it sounds like you're listening to, and it'd be like, oh, sublime. That's a nice moment. Uh, I am going to push the character up a wee bit. We don't want to do it too much, but we do need to do a little bit. Uh, and then, angle-wise, I mean, I feel like I'm contriving the angle a little bit, but maybe we could go forward a tiny bit. Keyframe those. And yeah, let's see how this plays. This will be very interesting. Wow, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to play it. I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk it because, you know, and it's not even about monetization. Sometimes, depending on the license, YouTube will actually keep my video from being watchable. <laughs> like, it's happened before where it's they're just like, this video is currently set to private because it the, cop the, so the, the copyright prevents it from being heard if you don't have a license. I was like, well... I'm never playing music on stream again. <laughs> well, I mean, unless it was like, I own the license to it, but yeah. Honestly, it looks good. Let me see it from the back. No tearing, a little bouncy there. Gets a little bouncy. I wonder if, can I edit keyframes while it's moving? I can? Kato is the best. That's amazing. I, I, I am absolutely not saying that there aren't other editors that can do that, but I personally have not used an animation editor that lets me move keyframes while it's playing. That's sweet. Hey, what's up, Freaker? Good afternoon to you. Hope you're doing well. Speaking of music, Freaker uh, made the intro and outro music we use uh, without any copyright, so appreciative of that. Hope you're doing well, Freaker. Good to see you. I think it's a bit too jiggly before the jump, unless you're fine with that. Mm. Yeah, I see that. I wonder why. Where's that jiggle coming from? I mean, it would have to be the position stuff, I guess. I just removed a whole keyframe. And it looks a lot better. Still a little bit. I still I totally see what you mean. And I do agree. Neil's alright at making mashups. I mean, I feel like if you like mashups, you're pretty good at hearing ones that'll go together. The hard part is getting the tempos to sync up. Figure's doing good. Had a minor surgery on Tuesday, but healing up good. You had surgery? It's minor, it's minor, it's minor. 
Oh man, yeah, get some rest. Take good care. And I'm glad you're getting the care you need. Wow. It's surgery time. It's surgery time. That drink of water was a cheers to you and your healing. But you've 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 been there before, so I think you you know like how to take care and everything. Going to sleep and waking up now knowing where you are is so weird. <laughs> Not knowing. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, I was just there. It is so freaking weird. It's so, it's almost not right. It's almost not right. I think <laughs> it's an amazing marvel of modern technology, but it's almost not right. Now this is still only half of the run. But I do see what you mean 100%. Something about this leg feels like it's not moving enough. But I wonder if that will look better later. But it almost feels like it's not moving enough. Like the, the left leg is doing all the work. And the right leg is just, I don't know what it's doing. But I'll finish it out, and then we'll see if a chain needs to be made. Psychonic says that you're probably setting the Y position of the entire armature in some in-betweens of the other steps, the red keyframes. Yeah, I am. I am. I did do that. And actually, some of that kind of helps maybe maybe not maybe i need to fix that more the reason why i had done that too was to help keep the foot from going through the ground but i see too how that can cause like an issue But is it like necessarily all bad to do that? I don't know. Maybe it is. It's a little tricky. I'm gonna keep going and then we'll see. Yeah, get well soon for sure. You got this, freaker. I'm glad I'm glad you're taking care. I'm glad you're taking care. Thanks for letting us know. Alright, so I'm just gonna press on. I do feel like there are some some things to maybe tweak later on. Let's hit a save. Let's get back to our view here. And keep it going. Next is the next in between. So we're going back down. And this time, yeah, I don't know, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> I don't wanna think about it, what it means and all that. So I'm gonna grab the skeleton, hit edit, and the uh, right leg, it's actually not that different. <laughs> God, the foot is literally covered up. It's a little lower. We bring down, we bring it down just a bit. And the foot is less bent. And Kind of similar for the other leg. Bring it down a bit. I mean, it already is kind of not bent that much, so I'll just kind of leave it. And then with the arms, no shoulder. Don't touch that shoulder. Bring the arm in a little bit. 
bend it more like we're pumping Oop. pumping that arm back arm adjust a little bit so overall very similar but a little less extreme I also wonder if some of my rotationing isn't causing some of the bouncing. And then height wise, we actually go higher at this point. So I'm going to hit the position the rotation, and the skeleton, save it, and let's see. All right, all right, seems fine for now. It's not much change, so it's hard to really say. But I feel the gravity, it makes sense, like you be up, and you're like on the way down, but you're still kind of going up. I like that, that works for me. Let me extend the timeline out a bit. Hit a save. And now we do contact again. Except this time the opposite leg is going to contact. And then I believe we're going to want to animate. I think. I think. We do still need to animate the other side, probably. Maybe. So now the uh, back foot, the left leg. Oh, we got to do a bone edit here. So now that one is going to be contact touching the ground. With the foot, the heel pointing up. And we actually are at the same height. Oh, wow. That's going to be tough. I mean, I'm going to have to come down a little bit. It almost makes it. Almost. Doesn't quite hit that blue line. So I'm going to have to bring it down just a teensy weens. It looks like it comes down a bit to me. And then the uh, front leg is now kicked back. Not bad, honestly, just like that. And with the arms, no shoulder. Don't you touch that shoulder. The arms are actually very similar. Well, it kind of like flattens out, wrong arm. Kind of flattens out a little bit up here. And then at the bend, it starts to bend a little more. And then the top part of the arm on the other side. Little point here. Continues straight across from the other side. Maybe kind of like that. All right, record the bones. No crash. Love it. Oh, and then let's adjust the position. Push it down just a little bit so it's actually touching. Uh, Rotation-wise, I mean, I would say it even goes forward a little more. Oh, actually, well, then I don't maybe don't need to adjust the position if I rotate it. Probably shouldn't rotate it too much. I'll just do like this. All right, record those. Bam, bam. And let's see what we got. I'm going to shorten this up. And let's see. Now, this is just playing forward and then backward. It's not a loop.
Hmm. I feel like that other leg isn't moving enough. Did I not keyframe it at all? I mean, it looks very similar. It just doesn't look like it does much. It just doesn't move much. But it moves a pretty good amount between these two, this back leg here. It moves a pretty good amount between these two, but between these two, it's basically not moving at all, which feels ridiculous. So <laughs> I'm gonna move that a little more. I'm gonna hit save, cause I don't know, I just smell a crash coming. It's been too long without one. So we'll just tuck this in a bit. Still kick it out. Record the bones, no crash. Still feels like not a lot, because the other leg is moving so much. Comparatively. It's like, it just, I feel it, is it even moving? It just feels like it isn't even moving. It is. Maybe I need to point the foot differently. Edit bone. We want this foot. I don't know, it's just, it's bothering me that it doesn't move a lot. I'm actually just gonna record the key a single key so that way I don't have to do the bone all bones risk again that's a little better it feels like it's just moving a little more okay good uh, now that's not gonna loop yet of course we still have to do the other side but like some childlike ignorance wants to believe in me wants to believe that Oh, this is plenty. Nah, you're good. You only gotta do that much. So let's loop it. Let's see how wrong I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's only doing one side. So we gotta do the other side now. Let's bring this up. So we wanna do the same set of steps, except starting from the down, except now we wanna have the legs flipped. So the, the back leg, or the left leg in this case, needs to be bent considerably more, and we need to be getting much lower down. So I'm gonna bend the foot It ultimately needs to be just about flat, not quite, but just about. And we want to be much lower. Much lower. I'm, I kind of want to see how low we were on the other side at this stage. So there, that's bent a bit. Uh, the back leg needs to, or the front leg in this case, needs to be close, but bent back. And the arms are really, they're pretty far out. No shoulder, don't you touch that shoulder. So a much looser bend here, I guess, or more obtuse. Looks pretty good to me. All right, keyframe those, keyframe those bones. And then for the whole thing, I kind of want to look at what we did before for the down. 
and just get the position and rotation from that. So we started the contact. Why are we up in the air here? Shouldn't we be on the ground by that point? Something is something is funny here. I think because I didn't yeah, this is supposed to be the down right here. This is supposed to be the down. We need to go way down here. I got rid of that keyframe and it was a mistake too. But it was I did it because of that bouncy that was happening. So the rotation, I'm just going to copy these and I'm just going to paste them or duplicate them over here. And that brings us down too low. But I'll adjust the bones so that that makes more sense. So for the left thigh, got to be in edit mode. For the left thigh, pull this up more. Bend the foot down more. So sort of like that. Record it. Save it. I just have a feeling this is going to look super weird, but that's okay. This is harder. The running is harder than the walking. The arms are so fast. They move so fast. Really, the whole switch is very fast, but we can adjust the speed later. I see what you mean, too, the bounciness. It gets a little chaotic in there. You know, maybe spacing things out differently will help. I actually kind of think that arm needs to not cut through the back like it's doing. I feel like that's not good. This is considerably more difficult. So it really crosses right in this one. It's tough. So I'm going to want to say for that, this is the right arm. I'm going to want to edit that bone and actually kick it out a bunch. So it goes around the body, the legs. Keyframe that rotation. And I would say we could start kicking it out back here. Keyframe that. Whoops. I didn't do that right on top of it. Let's just do it again. Swing it out. Keyframe it. I even think in the first one here, we can rotate it out a bit. It's definitely a little odd. Are you an animation pro yet? Hey, Entropy. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, here's the walk cycle that we got yesterday. It turned out great. The walk cycle is proving to have been a little easier than the run is is so far but i think it turned out really really well uh the feet are clipping with the numbers a little but the numbers are temporary so i'm not too worried about that but it just adds so much more to it yeah it is oh cool i'm so glad to hear you say that i agree dum, 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 dum. <laughs> it's just it's got so much personality and it just contextualizes it so now i'm trying to do the run so when we speed up here 
I want to do a run animation. Now I didn't, I also didn't do the arms as you can tell for the walk and the arms are, you know, they add an extra layer of complexity. So I'm trying to figure that out. But yeah, I'm trying to do the animation right now. It's, it's all right. So this is for the run. This is half of the run. I've only done half of the run so far. And this is just ping ponging back and forth. Um, we'll see. <laughs> It's proving to be a little more difficult, but I'm only halfway through it, so it's kind of hard to judge yet. Going for a second animation loop and a blend between. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I did the walk. So, for the walk. Is it? Wait, what would be the other way to do it? I don't even know what the other way to do it would be. I'm just trying to do it. So I did, like, you know, one leg. I mean, I guess I could ping pong it and have that be the whole thing. If it is being an overachiever, then I would like I would like to be left alone to not realize I'm overachieving because because I don't exactly want to do more work than I have to. But I also like the way it is to speed up the walk animation, I guess. would be the, Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. I could do that. I could do that. I don't know. I feel. I guess I am an overachiever then. I don't know. I <laughs> screw it. I am. I don't know. I just. I feel like it. This walk is very walky. It's really clumpy, you know, and we're losing that airborne step. That step where you're actually like flying through the air. Why are we so low to the ground also? I don't I don't always understand everything, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. It looks fine in the game. Everything's fine. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it'll be... It just looks too walky. If, if I thought it looked like it could be a run, yeah, maybe. I think it'll look better if it's different. Plus, I'm having fun. I enjoy... I find it kind of soothing doing the animating. Get that Pepe airborne. Yeah. Flying Pepe. Okay. It just has, it just has so much more to it. Like, I mean, look, the arms need to be animated here. So keep that in mind. But even ignoring the arms, I mean, the legs are just doing so much more. Naruto arms, and it's instantly speedy. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's, like, maybe not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, maybe there is a way to, like, nudge the walk. I don't know. I guess I'm also interested in, like, kind of learning how different it feels. And if I'm like, this wasn't worth it, then I'll make it different. But you make a good point that... You know, in terms of doing game development, it's often important to cut as many corners as possible. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I feel like it's not taking me that much time. You know, doing animation in Godot isn't that bad. So, I'm kind of willing to suffer through the extra work. But you make a good point that that does, that can get the job done for sure. I want this game to look as good as I can make it. I feel like we don't hit the ground hard enough there. Like we start lifting up off the ground a little too soon there. And shouldn't that other foot contact? Animation is fun. Brings a lot to the final product. Yeah, absolutely. See, now we got that foot going in the ground, though. Which I just hate. There's a lot of little problems here. 
is this i mean this animation this position versus that position it should be much higher But see, then this doesn't hit right. Because it should be when the feet push off, that's when you go up. Or down. Well, I guess not necessarily. This is kind of, I kind of got this all messed up here. So this one is like that. This is down. This is up. And then this is the in-between. Or no, this is, this should be a little higher. We go up. And then we should kick off a little higher, which we kind of do. But that foot. I don't know. I just, I'm going to, I'm going to let it go. But I'm just trying to make sense of what this looks like. So we're on the down here. And now we need to go back to the in-between. Right. So we want that back leg. Let me hit a save. We want that back leg to push up. So we're going to get onto the skeleton. Select the bones. And it's swapped now. I got to remember it's swapped. So what's happening in this reference that's on that straight leg needs to be the leg that's in the back, which is the left one. So that one needs to be like this. I need to move that other leg so I can see. It's so hard to see. And that leg is going to be in the front, starting to bend forward. That's the right one. And this one starts to push us up. In, in the previous cycle, this, the previous half, this one pushed us up the most. In the drawing, that's not quite the way that it is. But for whatever reason, that's how it turned out for me. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. I feel like the rotation is causing a lot of problems. I might need to get rid of the overall rotation. We'll see. This seems fine. And then the front one, or the right one in this case... It's pretty good. I didn't change it much, but it seems good. And then the arms don't touch the shoulders. This one is going to be, oh God, I got to flip, flip my brain around for it. Down here. The good bend. Seems like it's almost parallel with the leg. And then the other arm, don't touch the shoulder, is almost like relaxed. Also kind of parallel with the leg, a little bit. All right, record those keyframes. Oh, it crashed. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, so that that's, I don't know what is up with that. Um, I could look it up. Godot, I'm sure there's not much to say about it. Keyframe, all bones crash. Model with bone animation crash device for stable. I, I don't know. It just keeps happening. I'm okay with it. That's why I'm hitting save all over the place. It's fine. 
It makes me better. Doing it again makes me better. Right. Right? Okay. Man, the internet is really just like staying at a baseline low today. It's so weird. Oh, and I see that there's some glitching happening too. Oh no, it's not just staying at a baseline low, it's glitching too. Sorry about that. I can only monitor the stream on a 30 second delay. So I don't notice when it's going awry till 30 seconds later. But at least I can follow this up here. Anyway, we're looking into it, we're looking into it. All right, so uh, I'm going to get that animation back open go to the run and we just got to do that next step again so we say that the back leg is going to be straight all right so i was it was helpful if i moved that front one forward That's not the front one. Move this forward, push this back. Still have a little bend to it, but mostly be back. Straighten this out. A little bend. It's not bad. And then the arms. Uh, yeah, like this. So this is kind of relaxed. This one seems kind of fine to me. Could move the hand a little just so it's a little different. And then the other arm, don't touch that shoulder. I didn't just animate the shoulder, right? I don't think I did. Okay, I didn't. The other arm needs to be parallel with that. A bit less of a bend. Looks good. Keyframe all those. No crash. And then I'm going to push it up a bit. So it's above that blue line. Keyframe that position. And let's see where we're at. Nice. Looks pretty good. We do have a lot of collision or clipping through the ground happening, unfortunately. <laughs> Look at that. It's so far in the ground. My god. And so then that's why I move the position to happen higher. But then it still it still be like clipping through the ground. Hmm. I hate that. I guess I could just, I mean, I could try pushing it up higher. It's so high. Keyframe that. Where's the keyframe? Push it up. It's so high, it goes so high. And we still get that clipping through. 
I mean, you know, I could lift it up higher on the frame before. Yeah, it, that really bothers me that we clip under the ground like that. I could just keep pushing up even higher. We're not supposed to be airborne at this point, though. That's the thing. And now we're it's super airborne. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why we keep... I wonder if it's like the, like the fact that I'm keyframing a certain part of the leg versus another part of the leg. Because there's the upper part of the leg and the lower part of the leg, and then there's the foot, which is basically the knee. It's like there's the pelvis, the thigh, the knee, and then that's also the foot. And so I wonder if I'm just like kind of keyframing the wrong thing. And maybe I just need to let it go. I'm just going to let it go for now and keep going. I'm just going to keep going. I didn't do any rotation here. I'm going to not do rotation for now. That's just the way it's going to be. Okay. Save it. Next step. Uh, this is the high point, evidently. We're not supposed to be off the ground yet. But we certainly are. I mean, that really bothers me. Like, we shouldn't be off the ground yet really bothers me. So then if I wanted to fix that, I would have to have the back leg be bent more like this. Which is fine. I just can't, we can't be off the ground when we're not supposed to. It's just wrong. And you know what I think? I, th I feel like I need to skip this step. That's what I think. I think that that's where we're getting some problems. I think that this in between the down and the high, I feel like we don't need it. But we do because the arms switch places. Like that's kind of, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like we don't need this in between one. I think that's where we're hurting. Just a guess though. So I mean, if I were to get rid of that over here, we started with contact, we went to down, and then we go to this in between. And that's where I start fudging around with things too. But then again, if I don't do the in between, we might have some kind of problem. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment here. I'm experimenting. I'm gonna cut out the in between entirely burning it down just don't feel good about it i mean i don't even know what's supposed to be i just like i don't even know what's going on here scoot this in Yeah, man. Well, I mean, I will say, <laughs> now we're clipping through the ground a lot. Massive clipping through the ground. So the in-between could, in theory, help us not be clipping through the ground. Let me also get rid of the rotation. I don't, I'm not feeling rotation. We can always add it in later if it feels like it should be there.
so I mean this does point to an in-between but not necessarily the in-between that is happening or that the art is telling us to do the drawing is telling us to do like what if I just push up a little bit so we're not colliding anymore keyframe that position You know, then we kind of bounce up in this weird way that doesn't make a lot of sense. So then I would say we'd want to modify the legs, not the position. So get rid of that. And have that back leg. Let me go to a different view. So here, it's, it's the red line. I don't want to go beneath. So that left leg there is, I mean, both of them, really. Especially that left leg goes way under before it, it hits this. I would say even focus on the right leg there. So I'm going to bend, I'm going to get the skeleton. It's a little messy. It's a little messy. And I'm going to bring up the right leg so it's touching the ground. And then I'm going to do something very similar for the other leg. It's going to be tricky because we need it to be in the same position. So I have to like bend it back. This is going to be weird. I don't remember the ones that I changed. So I'm going to keyframe them all. I don't feel great about that. I feel like that's going to look slow. Actually, it's not that bad. It's a little bit like a skip somehow <laughs> than a run. So at least in that phase, it's not bad. But that crossover in the next one is a bit of a problem. So I'm going to add another one in the middle. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm getting a little too tinkery here. But I don't care. I really need those legs not to be in the ground. Whoops. I feel like this is a big problem because now it's not going to animate. Like I'm basically keeping it from animating, which is a problem. We're like slowing down the actual animating. Mm. All right, I'll put the in-between back in. I'll put the in-between back in. So this is with the in-between that I took out. It stays above the ground pretty well. So maybe don't be taking it out. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have took it out. Because now the clipping is much better. We do have weird bouncing. Yeah, this is better. So then where am I at over here? So over here, I'm at... We're going up. Just keep going. I don't know what you're worried about, Lise. Just keep going. How about that? <laughs> uh... So here we're at the in-between and the high point. And we want it to be a little higher. I can't really kick the leg back much more, though. Without ending up lower when this is supposed to be higher. If you bend that foot... Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> Does not help. Yeah, 
you know, you could try the pelvis. Yeah, so that's probably the best thing that helps is actually pulling it inward more, which is like not what you're supposed to do according to this drawing. But it's the only way I can really get it to make sense. And then the other leg. points up more. It's just all a little messy. It's all a little bit messy. And I'm going to try to be okay with it. Yeah, the run's considerably harder. Okay, and then the arms. I'm going to keyframe it now. But then still do the arms. So the arms, we've got the straight leg arm is in front. The bent leg is in back, arm is in back. And we're bringing that in sharply. Their arms a little loose. Keyframe that. Hit save. Should have hit save earlier. Um, uh, technically, it's supposed to be a little higher. I'm just not going to make it a little higher. And that's just going to be OK. Uh, we could slow this down just a bit. All right, let's do the next phase. And this one is getting airborne. Let's go airborne then. And we want be in bone edit mode. We're going to kick this leg back way further. Bring the foot up. Uh, we're going to bring the other leg up more. Point that foot up more. Well, not really, because we want it to be like bent. So we actually need to bend this leg like this. And then the arms, we want to swing them out. Is this correct? So the, uh, the leg that's in the back, its arm needs to be in the front. Front, yeah, okay. I think I just obliterated the whole keyframing I just did. <laughs> I forget. I forget. You can't you can't be doing that. It's gets it gets to be a bit of a mind flip after a while. You can see how little the change is between these the straight leg here. And then that's similar back here as well. Oh my goodness. All right, so we got to redo. <laughs> I just got confused. It's getting confusing. So that leg, that, that arm is in the front. Okay, so this leg, we want to kick it way back. Bend it considerably. Get the other leg. Bring that forward. Bend it. 
and then the arms. Let's see if I can not get confused. I'm a little confused. This one goes in the front. It's way up here. Bend it a little less at the elbow. And then... Bend this like this. Okay, kind of like that. Woof. Keyframe, don't you crash on me. Thank you. Thank you. Now we don't have any height changing and you can really feel that. And we should really be getting higher here, which we can get away with. Oh, maybe that's too where the bouncing problem is, is that I'm doing a new position on each one and the and I should be doing it more gradually. Maybe that's my problem. So like if we're here, we go down. Now we go up. Like maybe I should get rid of the position in both of these places, uh, you couldn't really see what I was choosing. Uh, basically in between here, I got rid of it. And then it'll gradually, <laughs> well, I mean, now the collision, well, okay, that was a bad idea because now it collides wrong. So never mind. <laughs> Man, it's just it's just so confusing. Well, here is where I wanted to get a lot higher. So I'm going to push this up. Keyframe that position. See now Wait, now we're floating? Why? I'm a little confused. Why are we off the ground? Is it because I got rid of the rotation layer? What? Dude, wait, what is happening? Why is it not on the blue line? Why is it not on the blue line? Since when did it get off the blue line? But now both animate, but I like using the blue line as a measurement. Let me use the blue line. Am I, am I losing it? How did that blue line move? Did I like press a weird hotkey or something? Oh man, I'm all confused. Is something, is Godot glitching on me? Like now my cursor is gone? What is actually happening? 
I think something is happening in Godot. My cursor is gone. <laughs> so now if I want to click, I have to tab out and then tab back in. What? Yeah, my cursor's broken in here. I'm almost afraid to save it as it is. Look, I can only move my cursor. This is so weird. All right, here's what's gonna happen right now. I'm gonna make a commit. Uh, began doing a run animation. Editor got weird. Renamed uh, run one to walk one. Began a true run animation. And the editor got weird, and I'm afraid to save it as such. Saving, uh, committing. Previous save, then saving again. Wish me luck. I don't know, I'm just typing stuff, all right? Okay. Let's push or commit that. And then I'm gonna save it. Is see stuff even moved? It's fine, it makes sense. The animation does move. Look, but I can't use it. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna shut down Godot. There's, there's, look, my praise for Godot's animation is still there. I still think Godot has a great animation setup. However, I'm experiencing, personally, I'm experiencing some bugs that I haven't experienced almost elsewhere in Godot. The only other place I've had problems in Godot is sometimes if I put the environment effects uh, too high, Godot will like push my computer too hard and things will crash. But other than that, I haven't really had a lot of problems at all with Godot. But doing animation stuff suddenly, like I'm having all types of problems. But I still think overall it's a good system and I like it and stuff. Now we're back on the blue line. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's good. I like being on the blue line. Okay. We're back. So that's something that can happen. <laughs> Whatever that was. Uh, so I was contemplating adding in uh, movement up and down, and that's kind of when things went awry. So we go up here. We should continue to rise up. I was putting the move up right here. So push up, drop a keyframe. We're still on the blue line. Okay. Yeah, that looks okay. It's a little airborne. But I think that's all right. So why didn't that work over here? So when I leap... It's just, it's a much subtler leap up. We do have a gap. So from here, I'm going from the high point where we get up pretty quickly and we stay up and you can see I'm going above the bar, the toolbar here. Over here, when we get to that point, we're much lower. So we've somehow gotten even higher in the second, <laughs> in the second cycle. Wait, am I doing?
It looks like we're jumping. Is this really the right cycle? Contact. Down. In between. High. Highest. In between. Contact. Down. In between. High. Highest. I guess it's just maybe the spacing is different. Yeah, the spacing is different. I think that's what's making it feel so, so weird in part. Let's go with that. It's the spacing. It's complicated. This is much more complicated than the walk. Now we're still ending up pretty high. But maybe that's okay. <laughs> we could bring it down more. We don't need to go up that high. Keyframe that. And then, okay, so now we want to go to the in-between. I do feel like this... Well, but we do end up a little too far off the ground here. If I'm being honest. But, you know, if I duplicate this key here, I mean, we're, we're off the ground at a point where we're supposed to be touching the ground. That's a little better, actually. Actually, that's a lot better. If I put that keyframe there and I keep it the same height, that actually helped a lot. And now we go higher at that point. So that may be something I should emulate earlier back here. We start going up. So what I have here is, I wish I could add like labels in here or something. So this is the contact, that's the down, that's the in-between, this is the high, right? We're not going up at all from the in-between to the high. We're staying the same height from just before, for some reason, just before the in-between. I guess that's so it doesn't mess up. Okay, so we've got contact, down, in-between. There's a keyframe before the in-between. And so what if we keep it the same height? So get rid of this keyframe. Grab that one. What do you do? We don't want to skip any though. We're not, we're not. Put this here. Duplicate that keyframe. It's less bouncy, which is good. I don't know what that means. Jumbo Josh. All right. I heard Cheetos. Welcome. Good to see you, Cheetos. How you doing? Thanks for stopping in. Today I'm animating. Uh, I got an animation for the walk uh, for this character in this game. I am now working on the run animation, which I'm finding to be more difficult, but that's okay. But I'm pretty happy with the walk. So this is walking at the normal speed so far. And then if I speed up, we don't have a separate animation. And I could just speed up the walk, but I want to try to make a whole uh, 
a whole walk cycle, a whole run cycle. So that's what I'm working on. I'm almost done with it, but I don't know. It's going to need some tweaking. And then I want to do some other uh, cycle types, since in this game you can break off your limbs. So here we only have one leg. I want to do a special hopping animation on one leg. And then if there's time, which there might not be, but if there's time, I'd also like to do one where you're crawling on the ground and you're pulling yourself by your arms. That would be a nice one too, but we'll see. It's from a game called Garden of Ban Ban. Wow. Jumbo Josh. Jumbo Josh. Garden of Ban Ban. <laughs> oh, dang. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> I see it. Wow. Garden of Ban Ban, but all the scenes are Jumbo Josh. So, I mean, it, it's it's giving, what's that game? Poppy's Playhouse? Whatever the blue thing is. It's kind of reminded me of that. Huggy Wuggy. It's giving Huggy Wuggy. I do want to add some vicious teeth in there. Well, in this game, you get to be Jumbo Josh. You are Jumbo Josh in this game. This one is a mod? Boo! We want Jumbo Josh proper up in this house. Up in this totally not Huggy Wuggy's playhouse. But it's very similar where you never like really see the monster. And then suddenly you do. <laughs> Hi! He comes in the end in the original. Poppy Playtime. That was that's the game I'm thinking of. Interesting. Thank you for giving me that reference as comparison. It's uncanny. How you doing, Cheetos? Hope you're doing well. I just pulled this design out of my head. Uh, I want to get a cool, scary face on it eventually. But you'll be seeing it often. Not just at the end. So, I think I've almost got this animation animated. It's certainly possible. We're at the, we're getting, we're at the in-between part. Jumbo Josh subway servers. <laughs> yeah, this is Jumbo Josh subway surfers. Yeah. <laughs> little bit, little bit, little bit. I'm hoping it can be more interesting than a game like Subway Surfers. Uh, you know, Subway Surfers, you've got like three lanes, you know, and you're like constantly swapping between them. Got a little more freedom here. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll be more interesting. Subway Surfers is awesome. It's, it's a classic for a reason. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to avoid some of that the shallowness. I still have a long way to go in this game. But yeah, you, you, it's pretty much, you, you're right, it's, it's pretty much Jumbo Josh, Subway Surfers. When is game published? No idea. 
not putting a date on it. Uh, it's as long as it takes. Obviously, I don't want it to take long uh, because it's supposed to be kind of a small project. But I'm doing the whole thing live streamed, so I I clock about six to eight hours, uh, three times a week, on Monday for members. Uh, I work on the art. On Wednesdays and Thursdays, I do some more of the coding. Animation kind of falls in between. So I'm I'm working on it about uh, eighteen to twenty hours. A week? 18 to 18, 20 plus hours a week? Where's the PlayStation port? I don't know about that. <laughs> It'd have to turn out really good for that to happen. Um, It'd have to be, it'd have to turn out really well, sell a little bit on Steam, and then that would be an option. But I'm not really expecting that to happen. <laughs> PlayStation for it. All right. So let's get that in between phase. Right here. So for that, I'm going to want to get on the skeleton. We're going to hit a save, of course. So we're down here. Hit a save, grab the skeleton, make sure I'm in edit mode, and then make sure we're on the right keyframes. Okay. Now, I want the right leg to be down a little bit. Still bent. Point that foot up. Should make an online mode if possible so you can get more attention to the game. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna prioritize that. Just because... You know, it's just gonna be so much effort. You know, making online... I. <laughs> that's like... That's out of the scope a little bit for me. But that would be cool. I am toying with the idea. So like something that I'm taking inspiration from is like the old Star Fox games, which had companions uh, who would be flying alongside you, be playing alongside you. And that is like, that's a stretch goal that I have is to maybe get other aliens that are playing alongside you. Um, so at least that much would have to happen before I consider online. Uh, but yeah, that would get more attention. But you know, I'm I'm also more interested in just learning, getting a a basic idea executed. You know, I don't I I disagree with the concept of go big or go home. But oh yeah, leaderboards. Oh, a hundred percent. There will be leaderboards. A hundred percent. And I'll and I'll find a way to do that online while everyone could race. Well, I don't know. That's the hard part. <laughs> leaderboards doable. Uh, Having everybody in the same scene, very difficult. At least, it's 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 like gonna double the work that I have to do, and I'm not interested in experiencing that. So yeah, to me, I'm just here. I'm one person doing my best, trying to learn. And if I add stuff like multiplayer, this game will never get finished. You know, not interested. Uh, so that's a hard no from me, but, but, you know, you never know. Again, if the game turns out great as a single player game and it does so great that it sells on Steam well, okay, then maybe I'll think about it. But honestly, I don't even, even the idea of it getting on Steam is a stretch goal. You know, I'm really here to learn and make mistakes and look back and say, what could I have done better for my next project? I want to get to that point. I want to get to the point where the game is done as soon as possible and I can look back on it and reflect and move on to another project. That's what I want. 
much more so than making a super amazing, successful, popular, you know, dream game. I'm trying to avoid dream game. But, but the things you suggest would be cool. Uh, just not realistic for me. Customization? Maybe. Stretch goal. <laughs> Hard stretch goal. But, like, really, probably not. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I, I do want it to have roguelite uh, features, which would include being able to customize your play style a bit, which could come along with visual changes. So that's more likely. But, you know, like fun hats or something or clothes. I don't know. Probably not. But who knows? Your ideas are definitely indicative of what makes things fun for people. Um, and it's worth considering. But at this stage, I don't want to prioritize it. Yeah, abilities. So um, I do want to apologize. I know it just buffered a little bit. In the top left there, that's my internet uh, bitrate speed. Basically, if that's at 15,000 and it's green, we're good. If it's dropping below 15,000, which it has been constantly, <laughs> um, if it's below that and it's not green, then we have problems. So we are having some problems, but don't worry, it's not your computer, it's my internet. Um, so yeah, uh, I do have some plans for abilities. I'm not exactly sure how all that's gonna shake out. Um, but yeah, so, even like the jumping, I think the jumping will be there by default, but a lot of the gameplay will be based on like grabbing and clicking on things in the level besides moving around. So you might have like, you can grab more things at once. Uh, there, I also want you to be able to destroy things. So if you like click on this tree, you could break it. You could like snap that tree in half. So maybe you could have like a stronger attack or something maybe there could be like shields you could put up because you could get hit by things right that's part of the game is running into obstacles and getting hurt and so maybe you could have a shield that you put up or some way to like attack things like you could spawn like a not like a turret but like something out in the level that could either protect you or you know get things out of the way for you so yeah abilities are a poss possibility Accurate to Jumbo Josh? I don't know. I don't know anything about Jumbo Josh. <laughs> what does Jumbo Josh do? Anyway, I just reset these keyframes. I gotta do it again. But that's okay. Uh, skeleton. Edit bones. We're on the in-between. Bring down the right leg. Considerably. Man, we're the internet's hitting some serious problems here. It is about time. About 3.30 my time. Yeah, this is about the time it starts getting worse. I'll be looking into a different way to do this. Were you ever thinking to make a games channel where you play horror adventure type stuff? Hell no. Absolutely not. Not even a possibility. As much as I enjoy doing Pig Detective, I really don't like playing games on the stream. I really don't. I don't like doing it. Um, that'll never happen. Nope. Nope. Not gonna do it. Sometimes I'll play like friend stuff or like game jam entries people submit. Like I'll play I'll play your game on stream. But in terms of like it seems okay. That's amazing. We're getting lucky. We're dodging bullets here. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Uh I, I really don't like playing games on stream. I just don't like doing it. So not gonna happen but i'm actually flattered that you would want to know if i would do that 
Probably not. Because I'm, because who am I? Like, I'm, I'm just me, you know? I, I would only do that if I were, like, doing it for fun, you know, to, like, hang out with people. But I don't really find it fun to play games with other people. <laughs> so I would rather just do that by myself. I like playing games alone. So, you know, if I were to do that, it would be because somehow the YouTube channel has blown up. I'm, in anybody's eyes, a personality that they want to see do things. And then maybe I would consider it. But I don't expect any of that to happen, or even want that to happen. <laughs> it would be a purely business decision. Uh, but I appreciate your questions. Because it's nice to be like, to like, be able to say, yes, I want to do this. No, I don't want to do that. I know who I am. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know what works for me and what doesn't work. And that just doesn't work good for me. Okay, and then this other leg, we want to bring it in a bit. We're getting down to that contact position. Coming back to that starting spot. Lee's skating multiplayer. Wait, you made that, right? Didn't you make that? Was that someone else who made that? That was you during the Pig Detective streams. I feel like that was you. You made that in dreams. Deeply flattering, deeply flattering that you made that. I, I forgot about that. That was pretty cool, actually. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, I want to, I'm here to motivate myself to work on a game. I have such ADHD. I have autism. Like, for me, it's really hard to motivate myself to work. So, like, making a game off stream doesn't happen. Won't happen. Wouldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I, can, I can't even hold down, like, a job outside of doing this live streaming stuff. But by live streaming, it gives me a reason to be motivated to do work. Sharing this process, connecting with y'all, and having the structure of live streaming helps me actually sit down and do work. So like, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Um, and so if I, if I use this time to play games, it kind of starts to fall apart because then I don't feel motivated to stream because I'm not getting work done. And I'm not getting work done, so I don't feel motivated to stream. And it just, I just kind of just like, what am I doing here? <laughs> if Dreams had an online multiplayer. Yeah, that would be crazy. That would have been nice. That would have been nice. Dreams is dead. <laughs> it's so sad, but it's, it's quite true. I don't know when this happened, but I noticed their Trello isn't public anymore. I was like, wow, okay, that's the end. Well, rest in peace, dreams. <laughs> that, that, that surprised me. I mean, that might've happened a while ago, but I just happened to look the other night and the dreams Trello just like was private. And it still says in their documentation that it's public. I'm like, oh man, they have moved on. Like they're done. <laughs> They used to be so assiduous about keeping those things updated, you know, and they're just like, <laughs> bye bye dreams. All right, uh, arms, let's get these arms in some different spots. How much you wanna bet it crashes when I put these keyframes down? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just waiting for it. Maybe it won't. It's a way of coping with the trauma of it crashing. Just being prepared for that possibility. Here we go. Keyframing. Oof, didn't crash. Let's go. I will save it. So for this one, we kind of want to be about the same height uh, before 
we do go up a little bit. There's kind of a weird graduality that happens here. Do we have to have this keyframe? Yeah, we do, because otherwise it doesn't really make sense. So we got to push. So we go. It's weird that we go down and then up. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? I've seen LEGO Fortnite, and I've heard about LEGO Fortnite. It seems really cool. At first, I thought it was just like their the original like Fortnite, whatever the mode is where you do like a survival mode plus Lego characters, but it seems like it's a little more than that, and it's kind of got like a Minecraft thing going on. It seems really cool. Seems like a good idea for uh, for Epic. A wise business decision. Why does that work? So we go up, all right, whatever. I guess, I'm just trying to figure out like right here, what's going on? Like this position on the armature is at 0.136. No, not 0.136, just kidding. What is it at? Armature. It is 0.136. It stays there. And then it goes down to 0 0.06. And then it goes up to 0.143. This is supposed to be contact down in between and then high. And it goes down. That's wrong. That should not be like that. It's a lot of weird things going on here. That's a little better. I see 30 seconds ago, the stream got a little glitchy. I apologize on behalf of my internet. We're working on it. We're working on it. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's not. Today's a bit of a rough day. Hey, Storm Run, what's up? It's going pretty well. I, uh, I'm i doing a run cycle animation. I uh, don't know if you saw, but yesterday, the walk cycle turned out fantastic. Uh, there's that walk cycle animation. Looks really good, I think. And now I'm working on some different animations. Oh, we're glitching. Oh, those glitchings are happening. It's glitch o'clock. It's glitch o'clock in our household. Uh, so yeah, the walk turned out really well. And so now I'm trying to get the running. Hopefully you can actually see it. If our stream is behaving. Uh, and so now when I go fast, I want a separate animation for running. It looks like you got to see a little bit of the walk, so that's good. And so now I'm working on the uh, I'm working on the speed. Your net's been messing up. That's not Starlink, is it? Is that Starlink? See, I don't know about that Starlink. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking we're gonna try something called AT and T Air, which uses AT and T's like mobile towers, like mobile network towers. It's not going to be like as fast as the internet we're supposed to be getting right now. But instead of lagging, it more or less gets pixelated for a second and looks like a transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it's you can think of it like internet packets being sent like it all the data isn't getting sent between here and YouTube, it's like getting garbled. Because the internet juice isn't there to keep it all going across. You don't have Starlink. You start of your grandparents in the country. But you do believe in Starlink. You do, you do, you do. That's a last resort for us because of the upfront cost will be more. But I'm thinking maybe we try AT&T Air first. 
and see what speeds we get with that. Um, we'll see. All right, so the run animation is going okay. It's more difficult than the walk. Honestly, this isn't that bad. But it's got some problems, and hopefully everything will be fine. So we're at the in-between point, and now we want to come... Well, actually, in theory, we stayed down, or on the same height. Over here, your YouTube chat just glitched out for a sec. It was pixelated, too. Nah, -uh. What? What? That is weird. Global internet crisis. <laughs> so I do have it coming down a bit for the contact. I mean, there's the down. Here's the contact. It's just a little bit. But not much. All right, so we're at the in-between, which means we're almost at, basically we're almost at the end. We're, we're pretty much at the last, last step here. How is that gonna blend? It was black, it was like black, gray, white boxes that cascaded down the chat till everything showed up. That sounds trippy. That sounds da that sounds downright cool. <laughs> Actually. I'm a little jealous. Like like that should just be a special effect that happens sometimes. So this isn't going to be here cuz here we have the right leg in the front contact. Oh no, it will be the same. Oh yeah, so this will be basically the same thing. Well, couldn't we just stop it here if we loop it? Do we even need to do that last one? Kind of not. Sort of not. It's kind of a, a long way for it to come back down. Because it gets a little high. It just goes a little too high, and it has to come back down really far. And you don't really feel that impact for how far down we come. It doesn't feel like an impact. So I feel like we need like something that brings us down more. As long as the verse is the same as the last. That way it blends. But Godot may add the last verse. It does. Yeah, so basically it starts to blend The last, so I have like a gap here. Try to zoom in. So right here, there's no keyframe. And you can kind of tell it starts to blend it with the first one. But the problem is, is somehow I managed to get up too high for the second round. So for the first leg, we get up about that high. On the second leg, looks like a running animation, all right. On the second leg, we get higher. And then when we come down, it doesn't really like buckle. Maybe if I like, maybe I should bring the down a little closer. What about that? I don't know, it just like doesn't feel. Actually, I almost feel like it should be longer. Yeah, that's a little better. A little too long, maybe. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm such a noob. The farthest leg, when it goes back, looks like it pauses for a frame. The farthest leg? Oh, I see what you're saying. When it goes back.
Yeah, that might be... It looping weird. Oh, I made it longer. I need to also make the timeline longer. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It may be good. I think I was just watching it too close. Yeah, it's a little hard to tell. There's definitely something. I mean, look, there's something weird. Like, let's keep it real. Something is weird here. I feel like we should, the, the, the flailing of the right arm is really messed up. Get run animation in there and you can always adjust it later. Yep, true. Very true, agreed. Oh, the glitching is rough. I know the glitching is rough, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. It's not too bad. It's got some some strange quirks, to be sure. I feel like this this leg doesn't move enough right here. I think it could kick back a little further sooner. I'm going to try that. Stream is actually pretty solid. Instead of giving the circle lag buffer, it just goes a color, then blocks its way back. But it only takes a second. That's good. Yeah, I feel like the, the, the buffer circle is way worse. It's like so much more annoying. <laughs> for sure. Fair point. Thanks for letting me know. So, it turns into 30 pixels and then that happens, but goes back to 1080 pretty quick. Isn't it so weird? It's sitting pretty now for a few seconds. Uh, make sure we got our skeleton, edit the bones, and that's the left leg. I just feel like it needs to kick out further sooner. And I'm going to keyframe that. That helps a little bit. There's something is is the is the right leg not animating all the way? Or is that just like the hand? Yeah, something wrong is here. So we, the left leg is back. There it goes forward. The right leg should be coming back. And then it starts going forward again. The right leg starts going forward again right here. It should not go forward again, right? Right leg is coming back. It needs to stay put. or not go forward. So that's the right leg. Pull it back a little bit. Keyframe it. 
Let me see what that's like. I mean, I feel like it could even move more than that. I feel like I could just get rid of that keyframe entirely. A little risky. That's the, could be the right leg. Let's do the right thigh, get rid of the right pelvis, just all that. So it just comes back a little more smooth. Yeah. But it still raises a question, where is it hitting the ground? Legs kind of open like scissors, so if one is out, the other is opposite. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. So, like, I don't understand why it was not being opposite for a second there. Something is weird here. Maybe it just, I mean, it, it needs to not look weird from behind. That's the most important place for it to look right, is from behind. But it's like we hit the ground and then this back foot isn't touching. So I think right here, this back foot needs to actually, on the right, needs to be touching the ground. Because that doesn't make any sense if it's not touching the ground. If we're like landing, and it isn't landing. So I just need to make some of these little tweaks here. Whoops. Forgot to go into edit mode. But I mean, it is supposed to be in the air here. Maybe like I need to bring the rotation back in. When the left hits the ground, the right comes back up to the body a little, but doesn't touch the ground. And that's how it's supposed to be. Just a little less extended. Yeah. All right, I guess I'll just put it in the game and we'll see how it looks. It's really hard to tell. The arm is definitely messed up. The arm needs a lot of love. But let's just let's just code it into the game so I can actually see how it feels when you're playing it. Uh, that is on the player. We've got, if the terrain isn't slowed down, that is to say, if you're not running into a wall, play walk. I'd also like to say, if input up, then we want to play run. I don't think the elf, the elf, the else works. Oh, it still works. Okay, cool. And then can I do an else for this? Or do I not need to? I don't know. I'll start without it. I'm afraid it's not going to go back. You got a lot done in a day. Well, yeah, I, you know, I did a lot of this yesterday. Today, all I've done is the run animation. Uh, okay. Thanks, though. Yeah, you know, I'm doing my best. I've only gotten started today. Well, I wouldn't say I've only gotten started. Oh, shoot. I think it's trying to play both of them at the same time. That's got to be what's happening. So we should also say, well, I don't know. Is it trying to play both of them at the same time? This is tricky. This, I might have to do some research on how to do this right. Because it needs to know not to play this one. We had someone come through the stream a while back 
and help me figure this out for something else. And uh, I don't really remember how they solved it. Yeah, I think I think the animations are like conflicting with each other. And I think I need a very different setup here in order for that to work. We could say, I, I don't know if this will work. If I say, mm, if does the animation stop if a collision occurs yeah there's no but not that kind of collision only with the wall so here i'll show you so if i cut this out so this is the way that it has been so animation's fine it's not stopping uh that line is referring to right here when i run into this wall so then it stops. So that's the collision that it's looking for. And then when we jump, we're fine. So, and it was stopping before then, right? It was interrupting it way before then. So this is just when I press forward is when that's happening. No collision. So, you know, if I were to just come in here and change this to run, so we can just see it running, which I probably should do. So we can at least just see that. <laughs> I got stuck. That's a bug. I got to fix that. So there's a run animation so far. It's workable. It's kind of a lot. It's kind of doing a lot. It's a little distracting. <laughs> it's kind of a lot going on with this run animation. I think that arm just needs to be that it needs some it needs some TLC. But other than that, it actually looks pretty okay. You sure there's a way cuz there's a way in UE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I just got to figure it out. It's going to take a little bit of effort, but we'll get there. Something called animation tree. There is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but there is that. Yeah, I have seen that. I wonder if that would help us. I'm going to see what I can do in code, but uh, I should look into that. Good call. Uh, so... Okay, so if I say, I feel like there's a way to word this, and it may still not work, but I'm curious to know if there is a way to get it to work by just, like, writing the right code. Like, oh, it's loading because I zoomed in. Two-minute video. Oh, you know I like short. You know I like short. If All right, we're going to check that out. Let me try something and we're going to check that out. Unless this works, which it might not. And I'm going to need more. And the thing is, I'm going to need a lot more conditions. Like this is just the beginning. So I'm probably I'm going to need to look at what you're talking about. <laughs> like it's probably about an 89% chance. But let's see what I can faff around with. Ooh, the bit rate is dropping. It's dropping. If terrain slowdown is false, so though not just that. If input and then instead of else, I'm gonna say if terrain slowdown is set to true, stop. And just out of curiosity, does that work on its own? So there we got our run animation. I'm sure it does. Run run into this wall. It stops. Okay, so that's fine. 
Now if I say if input up and what if what if I don't even say that? What if I just take this entire line out? No if, just let it run. So the run is just playing and then sometimes it stops. So the run is just playing. If we run into the wall, we stop. Good. Now, if input up is not true, I think that does this is that's not right. We'll just say is set to false. Then do that. Else so this will be walk. Else do run. I don't know if this will work. But at least it's clear I want one, not the other. Okay, input is not pressed, so we're doing it. Nice. Nice. Now it snaps between them with no blending. So your video suggestion may help us with that blend. I'm sure there's like a way to get it to blend. But at least we can switch between these now smoothly. The wall can make you go into a trip animation. Yep, we break your legs. That's that's part of the plan. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, this one might, might you, you since it's about as tall as your head, let's bump into it. But I do absolutely want tripping to be a thing. So like this boulder here or that house, I would love if that made you trip and fall. Yeah. I'm thinking it just slows you down a little bit. We'll see. There's so much to experiment with. It works pretty well. The worst part is it snaps into the animation. I'm trying to just look at the legs because I didn't actually animate the arms on the walk cycle. And I feel like that's part of why the snapping looks so bad is because of the arms not being animated. So I think if I animate the arms, this transition won't be as bad, but there's still no way it's smooth. Because, I mean, when that arm on the right is in the back and I let go, it snaps to the front. It doesn't blend to the front it straight snaps to the front. So there's definitely not smoothness going on there. And we should look at how we can make it more smooth. That's why you want an idol that has the same beginning of every animation. That way they blend well when exiting animation. That's why you want an idol that has the same beginning of every animation. That seems like that doesn't make sense because like the run could stop at any time. The player can choose when to go from run to walk. So the the player's not necessarily going to be interrupting the run at the same point that the walk or idle animation begins. So it still needs to be able to blend between the last animation and the next one since the player can control at what point in the animation cycle that they switch, right? I feel like what you're saying makes sense if it's like, but maybe I'm misunderstanding or I'm like mistaken, but you know, if it's one thing after the other, you know, after a whole loop plays, but we can interrupt that loop. That's where the engine blend steps in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So I have a couple thoughts. I do want to look at the blending thing. I'm also in great desire to fix that arm animation on the right. The left one looks fine. The right one needs some love. The left one needs love too. They both need love in different ways. Uh, but the right one especially. Uh, and then the walk is missing arm animations altogether. So that would be a nice thing. I mean, even if I just like spam this, you can kind of see we're just like bouncing up and down in this really weird way. So let's look at the thing that uh, Stormrun's talking about. And it's like always starting at the same place. It looks just... I see what you're saying though, because those arms, like if I smash it, right, you can see it is always starting at the same place. But the walk cycle isn't always going to be ending at the same place. But I also see what you're saying too, then the engine blending doesn't have to work as hard if there is some like similarity there. All right, let's check out this video. There's things to fix here. There's things to fix, but we're getting there. You said it was called smoothly transition blend between separate animations. Let's go. Jumbo Josh. Three years ago. Okay, noted. Some things might be different. I don't even know, did they have all the animation tools here? I wonder, I'm just curious. I just wanna look at newest comments. It's a little old, but not that old. All right, so it seems like people are still having help from it. Let's go. There's one that goes up and down and one that does and whatever. And this channel is Pirate Chip Games. This is. What if we wanted the ice cream to move smoothly in between those animations? First, let's check out the script. All this is doing is showing the left animation on left click, the right animation on right click, and much the down animation when neither are clicked. Now here's the really cool part. We're gonna hit the animation player, hit the animation button, and then select edit transitions. Mm. Since we're on the down animation, we're just gonna edit the left and right animations, making them both half a second. Now, when the down animation is playing and we transition into either of the other ones, it's gonna take half a second to smoothly blend into right. the next animation. That was the easiest most helpful thing. I love you, Godot. That's amazing. Okay. So all I gotta do is... Is it manage animations? Wait, what was the thing? What was the thing I click on? Edit transitions. It's currently grayed out. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical reason for this oh because i need to select the animation player that's probably why and be in the scene that it exists in there we go okay edit transitions where to go where is it there it is beautiful so then the walk will say sure 0 0.5 0 0.5 i love it let's go Sweet. That was easy. Let me make sure it works first <laughs> before I celebrate. Yeah, it works. It's It could be smoother. But I would say it works. I'll keep watching the rest of the video. I will. But I got too excited. I guess it's really like when the... And there's some other things too. Next auto cue. That's interesting. Um, it's so much easier than Unreal Engine. Oh shoot. Wait, there's even like a little bar down here. Oh, we can like set the curve position, I'm guessing. Wow. This is nice. Okay, now, I mean, 
I'm gonna keep watching the video because I'm not sure this exactly is what I imagined. Transitions. Since we're on the down end, and then click we need to say what's next. When neither are clicked. Now here's the really last one and one that does what's animation on right click and the animation button and then select edit transitions. Since we're on the down animation, he's already got next. Set We're up. just going to edit the left and right animations, making them both half a second. Now, when the down animation is playing and we transition into either of the other ones, it's going to take half a second to smoothly blend into the next animation. I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. And all we have to do to fix the other ones is to make them half a second mm. on the animations that they transition into. Oh, I see. So we're on the run right now. And I'm only editing the transitions from run to the others. So there's no from run back to run. Run is run. Run is run. We go from run to walk. That takes one second, right? But I feel like I would be seeing that. And then what is this next auto cue? So I've only done the run transition. I also... <laughs> it feels like it's still snapping, but maybe I'm missing something. And maybe... Hmm. If I make it 10. Blend times. We're on run. I mean, I just, I'm just not noticing it. Let me go back to walk and let's set this up 10. It's actually blending pretty well. It's just cause the arms start out different. Yeah, maybe that's why. So this is for the walk. I don't know, it's still snapping, you know? It's still that snappiness. Something still seems like not as smooth. Like, am I bugging? Or is this just not right? Now he had it set up a little different where, so mine's if and then else. So like if I were to just make up something here and say, like make this different, this is not the way it should be. But if I say, if input down is set to true, I don't know, just to just to do it more like what, what he's got. Oh, we don't have input down declared here. Whoops. Wait, where's input up declared? Oh, right here. I see. Okay, hold on. Let me declare that. I just want to try something. More like he has it set up. Tell it to blend for a full second. Well, I did the number 10. Is that... I, I thought that might be 10 full seconds, but maybe it's milliseconds or something? Maybe that's why... It's not looking as much as I think it is. So down should make us run and up should make us walk. Oh. Uh. Oh, I forgot to make this down. Okay, there we go.
Oh, there it's blending. Yeah, so I think doing the if else is making it not blend correctly. So now it's blending, although it looks hella weird. I'll say if input up is true. Let me do that. Right, well, hold on. Maybe it's not blending. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> wait a minute. 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 Okay. I actually don't think it is blending. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Undo all this. Put it back to if else. This should be fine. Okay. And then come to the animation. So are you saying that this is not seconds? I mean, if I make this. 1,000, 1,000, this in theory would be the walk to the run. In theory, this would be the run to the walk. 1,000 is the number that we're going with. See, it still snaps. I feel like it's not working for some reason. I guess I could do we don't have that either uh we could do do we have an input for jump let me set this up yeah I don't think it's working 1000 would be a second in milliseconds right exactly Variable input jump input. I'm just gonna, I might as well set this up anyway. Just pressed UI accept. And then here, I'll just say, if input jump. And then here, I'm going to say, if input jump, do the walk. This is not the way I want my code to be. But again, I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing it the way he has it set up. He may have done something with code he hasn't shown yet. That's true. I haven't finished the video. I mean, I'd be, he may have done that. That's true. He may have done that. So jump will play walk, up will play run. So we're walking and we're running. Walking, running. Uh, and let me actually just comment. It's actually making it very confusing. Let me comment out the jump. So even set up the way he had it set up with just the if statements. It's still just snapping back. No transition. So I'm going to put it back to the if else. Make sure I've actually returned things back to normal. Yes. And yeah, let's keep looking at the video. And then this is what you end up with. This disgusting mess hey, of animations that beautifully transition to one another. <laughs> Good to see you. It's a little weird looking, I guess, when they have like different movements and stuff and it transitions into this and that, but it's definitely something to play around with. I think it's a really powerful tool that I didn't know existed until just the other day. And I was like, dude, why is this not like, why was this so hard to find? <laughs> Hopefully this is, you know, good information for somebody. Here's the really cool part. We're going to hit the animation player here.
I mean, the only other thing I think about, delicious pink ice cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, this is a tutorial helping us figure out how to blend animations. So I've been doing uh, walk and run animations for the game. And uh, the blend between the walk and run is not great. I still want to fix up the run a little bit. The walk is looking really good. Uh, the run needs a little love. But it's not bad. But you can see it snaps between them very abruptly. And so I'm trying to get a smooth blend between them. And there seemed to be this amazing solution that isn't quite working out. And so I'm just sort of puzzling that out. And that video with the delicious ice cream is uh, using the ice cream as an example of how smooth the animation could look in theory. Animation's already? This is getting better. Yeah, right? Thanks. Yeah, I, I really want there to be that like base level of polish going on. I'm going to put a thousand over here as well. I'm not going to do anything in the auto queue. He had something set in the auto queue by default. But yeah, Frank, I really want that like base level of polish where things are you know, I don't know, just looking and feeling like a game. You know, just I want to I want to be somewhat immersed in it in that sense. So yeah. I think it's better too. Oh! 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 I think it was putting them in the wrong places. Okay, so if we're on if we're on walk, I make run zero and I make walk one. If I come to run and I make, I guess we're s setting itself. I guess this is if it's blending into its, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, it, it was working. I think it just because it was a thousand, it was like overlapping with itself. Oh, I don't know. It's still. I mean, something was happening there because there was like that of that self overlap. So the animation depends how fast or slow the alien is going. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I want when we're going fast it to feel fast. I'm going to make this a thousand again. This is just on the run. On the run, I've set the run to a thousand. I mean, that's not doing anything. As far as I can tell. If I go to the walk, I set the walk to the walk to a thousand. What happens? What was that weird glitchiness? How did that even happen? Dang. That was such a fake out. What if I say run is next in the auto queue? I don't know. Whoops bug nothing dang so the other thing is is this animation player is also like an instance I don't like I feel like that shouldn't matter but it is technically true All right, what if I make both of these a thousand? It's so weird because it was doing something. It was doing something strange. Okay, now it's doing something strange again. Okay, something strange is happening. This is good. So when I press forward, right, so the walk, right now the walk animation has no arm animations. Let me restart this. There's no arm animations for the walk. They just stay forward. 
Now, I'm going to press W and look at the weird stuff that's happening. So this did something. This has done something. Now, if I remove the auto cue, is it still doing that weird thing? It is. Okay, so that's not having an effect that I can notice. Now, what if I remove the walk 1000? What if I get rid of that? Does that change it? Still doing the weird thing. Okay. Now I'm gonna go over to the run. Over here, I have run at a thousand. I'm gonna put run at zero. Play that, see if it does the same weird thing. We died instantly. It doesn't do the weird thing anymore. And I can't notice, I don't notice any blending. So in order for it to do that weird thing, I don't actually remember what this was set to, was run, so the blend time of run on run is set to a thousand and the blend time of walk on walk is set to zero so run is set to a thousand on both the walk and the run and if that's true then we get this weird glitchy situation so it's doing something something is happening when when run is set to a thousand on both of these Well, what if I make walk a thousand on both of them? So I'll make that zero. Make this a thousand. Come to walk. Set the blend time on walk to a thousand. Make run zero. Does it still glitch and maybe in a different way at a different time? Yes, we are getting a glitch. This time, it's when I let go. So now I'm not, I'm not pressing anything. There, that was a thousand. Did you see? It kind of like, it like petered out. Whoa. <laughs> this is weird. So, okay. Something is happening. So if I press forward, it's fine. It's doing what we'd expect. If I let go from pressing forward, it takes a thousand very glitchily to even back out to being normal. Press it, let it go. It's not a smooth blend. It's a very, very glitchy blend. So it like works, but for some reason it blends hideously, just hideously. So that's probably why we don't notice. It's more of a delay. It's not blending. It's like delaying. It's like stretching. I'm a little confused. Yes, the alien's arms are looking very strong, to say the least. I would agree, Frank. It blends amazingly. It's generous of you. It's very generous of you. I appreciate you, Frank. It's not the amazing I'm going for. But I appreciate you. So, I mean, I kind of want to see, I mean, I guess I'm also curious, I don't even know.
There's also this bar under here. I don't really understand this bar. It seems to be resetting itself. Like this bar doesn't actually do anything, this slider. If I change it to that and I click off of it and come back, it just resets it. The alien is just saying hi while running through the trees. Hi, 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 hi. Well, that's very nice. I like that. Thank you, alien. Thank you, alien. I'm going to try setting the auto queue. I don't expect it to do anything. Yeah, it just glitches it. So weird. Uh, I'll check out the comment section of that video, see if anyone else has anything similar in their experience to that. But everyone seems to be having a great, a great time. I don't think anyone else is having a problem. Huh. This is. What if we wanted the ice cream to move smoothly in between I those animations? I don't know. Psychotic. Uh, Stormrun found this video about blending animations. So I've got... I've got the run... And the walk. Uh, if we're press, if we're not running, play walk. I guess I could make it a little more <laughs> intuitive. If we are running, play run. If we're not running, walk. Um, and in this tutorial video, uh, he's got pretty much the same setup. The only difference is his is saying. If we press one button, play this animation. If we press another button, play a different animation. But I mean, this is pretty much the same thing. It's just if else. So we've pretty much got the same thing here. Um, his animation isn't in an instance, for whatever that may or not, may not be where. But yeah, if input true, up is true, run, otherwise walk. Now, the tip was that we can come down here to the animation section, click on animation, go to edit transitions, and we can change how the ending transition blends in to another animation. When he does it... First, let's check out the script. All this is doing is showing the left animation on left click, well, the right see. animation on right click, and the down animation when neither are clicked. Now here's the really cool part. We're gonna hit the animation player, hit the animation button, and then select edit transitions. Since we're on the down animation, we're just gonna- He's got something in the auto queue. I haven't found that to do much for us. Edit the left and right animations, making them both half a second. Now when- So he's in the down. He's in, he's in the down animation. animation we're just going to edit the left and right animations making them both half a second now when the down animation is playing and we transition into either of the other ones it's going to take half a second to smoothly blend into the next animation i mean come on that's pretty awesome and all this is smoothly the blending to make yes the ice cream half a second on the animations that they transition into and then this is what you end up with this disgust and all we have to do to fix the other ones is to make them half a second on the animations that they transition into. And then this is them half a second on the animations that they trans. Okay. So I mean, the walk needs to transition into the run, right? So in theory, I would want the run to be let's say a second. Try pressing 0.5 as a second argument for anim player. Ooh, a way to do it in code. I like that. 
Trying to pass a point five as a second argument for animation player. Oh, ho, ho. someone should have read the documentation. Me. Okay. All right. Okay, Godot genius. Let's uh, let me first get rid of this stuff. So that's not messing with us anymore. So now we'll just have it going normal, where it just snaps between them, <laughs> and we spawned into death. So now we can walk most of the time, and then if we run, it just snaps into it. Now, Psychonic is suggesting a wonderful suggestion that adding a second argument into here will help. 0.5, 0 0.5. Let's go. Let's go. Much better! That did it! So, I don't know why with that other video, which is a very cool tip, why that didn't work. But, man, code wins again. Thank you! Thank you so much, Psychonic! What the heck? Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah. Now the arm animation needs some help, of course, but now I can think about that and not how they blend. Okay, that's great. Look at that. Much better. It's got a few eccentricities. Like it kind of flails in ways that aren't sensible. In the previous approach, I think you needed to set the Q thing at the bottom, but I've never tried it. Hmm. All right, let's say that was the problem. Let's go. <laughs> so we're on the walk. If I go to the run and end it again, it's kind of like if I take more than 0.5 seconds, maybe. I don't know, we kind of get, we get some weird flopping for sure. What if I make it a lot longer, just out of curiosity? And then besides that, I also want to look at the documentation. Thank you, Joe. Oh my gosh. So freaking helpful. It definitely still does some weird things if I just tap it. But that may be a different issue. We may want to tell the code to wait a second before it plays the other one or something. Well, no, because it has to be a blend. I'm not really sure. It's kind of a different problem. I had the same issue before, so yeah. Nice, nice. Helping each other with times we helped ourselves. Hooray. It do, it do be glitching a little bit. Now maybe it'll be less if the other, the walk cycle has more of an arm animation in it. It's a million times better. But you see what I'm saying? Like that left arm especially, kind of be like, So if we say walk into run, what if I make walk into run? You know why it janks around sometimes? Nice. Tell me. In the meantime, let me study this animation player documentation. Custom blend, custom speed from end. Oh. So here's all the things that we can pass into the animation. We can say the name of it, the blend, a custom speed for that blend, 
And we can also say if or not the blend happens from the end. Hmm. From end. I wonder if we want to try a true on that. So getting them to blend on the animation is as simple as adding a number at the end of the code. I love that. Script. Get me back to the script, please. So, I mean, if there needs to be all those other arguments, I mean, if I were to just say from end false, I don't know. If I'm skipping all those other arguments, will that cause an error? Maybe not. Joe says, I think the arm's rotation passes the 180 degree mark from its original position. It just completes the rotation since it's a shorter path than going back the way it came. I see. The speed is for the animation and the front end plays the animation on reverse, I think. Oh. Whoa. Oh yeah, the from end is all messed up. <laughs> I see. So if you wanted to like go back and forth. Gotcha. <laughs> that was not that was uh patently incorrect. That was uh not what we want. I'm gonna try the other one because I'm just morbidly curious. <laughs> I gotta get that itch back here. Look at that itch. Right, and this kind of supports what you're saying, though. And it's interesting, too, because it just, like, ends it. But, like, here, the blend doesn't have any type of... Oh, you can't skip them. So setting this to false, setting the animation speeds, that's why it's frozen. False equals zero, I guess. Oh! Cool. First of all, cool. Uh, so there was speed. I don't know what the default speed is. I feel like it might tell you in there. It's one by default. And then we say false. I didn't know that you couldn't skip them. That's helpful. All right, I'm curious, see what happens. Play in reverse. Honestly, it doesn't look that different. One is the default speed, 0.5 is half, two is double time. All right, nice. Nice, so that's good to know. And so this is double timing it, or not double timing it, sorry. Uh, this is playing it, fr so from the run, from the walk to the run, the run plays, does not play from the, it's false by default. So we'd want to say true if I wanted to try this. If I wanted to see if it was like different, we'd want to say true. Honestly, it doesn't look different. Um, as for the 180 degree rotation thing, hmm, that's a bit tricky. The, the docs say, oh. You can't paste it all here, but read under the play function. Okay. <laughs> uh.
Oh, there's more. Plays the animation with the key name. Custom blend times and speed can be set. The free, oh, the free. The from end position. Oh, I keep reading it wrong. It's so tiny. The from end option only affects when switching to a new animation or track. I keep reading it right. It's so small. Ugh, I'm like an old lady. Uh, no, I just haven't been to the eye doctor in a while, is why. I... <laughs> the from end position, uh, it says option. It says option. The from end option only affects when switching to a new animation track, or if the same track but at the start or end. It does not affect resuming playback that was paused in the middle of an animation. If custom speed is negative and from end is true, the animation will play backwards. All right. Did I understand that? Does not affect resuming playback that was paused in the middle of an animation. I don't know that that taught me anything. I find documentation language to be so hard to understand. Glasses squad, glasses squad, let's go. I'm super nearsighted. So like for me, you know, I want to just be like looking so close. I haven't been to the eye doctor in a very long time. Like, almost but not quite 10 years. A very long time. Super long. Go to the eye doctor if you can, folks. <laughs> it's worth it. The animation player keeps track of its current or last played animation with assigned animation. If this method is called with that same animation name or with no pause parameter, the assigned animation will resume playing if it was paused. The animation will be updated the next time the animation player is processed. If other variables are updated at the same time the thing is called, they may be updated too early. Before I update manually, call advance. Okay. Oh, we got play backwards. I might as well just play backwards. Shorthand for play with custom speed negative one from and true. So see a description for more. Gotcha. To be honest, I only understood the negative custom speed thing only. So yeah, it's just interesting. If custom speed is negative and it's true. Oh, I see. That's what you're drawing my attention to. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the rest of it is just not worded. I'm like, what are you talking about? How is this? How is this clear? <laughs> exactly, Frank. We need a doctor looking at those. Okay, so if I really wanted to see that, do something. If I really wanted to see that, do something. Then I would want to say, and maybe I really do want to see it do something. All this talk about it. We got to set the speed to negative, And then we can say true, right? And now it'll play backwards. From the end. Oh yeah, the arm's flinging the different way. It's flinging the opposite way. Oh, and look, it doesn't glitch like that. It doesn't do that jank thing. Because like you said earlier, it's not having to rotate that same heart. It does if I play out the entire animation and then let go of it, then it flings. So what's the solution? It kind of hurts my brain to try to think about the solution. Would it be like making sure, I mean, I still need to animate the walk arms, so that might change the parameters a bit, but I would think, that I need to not have the arm go as far. I like don't really know what the solution to that is. And I don't expect you to know. 
But if you do know, I'm curious. And if you don't, we'll look into it. Oh, you'll look it up. Maybe there's a constraint or something somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. No pressure. No pressure. It does. It makes my brain hurt. But if it makes your brain hurt, you deserve to have a comfortable brain and just hang out. But, but, but I will accept all help. And I will also do it myself. <laughs> but I wasn't sure if you knew. Anyway, it's nice to be able to have a run animation. There's just a lot, there's a lot of weird flinging going around that just doesn't make all the sense. And it bothers me. I see what you're saying with constraints. Yeah, yeah, take the load off. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh my gosh, Joe. I never expect anyone to help me. But I know I have a habit of just like asking questions out loud, which I ask of nobody sometimes, you know, just when I'm alone, I ask it out loud. <laughs> Nobody's there. But it's like, it's a way my brain tries to like understand what's happening next. That's why I talk so much when I'm live streaming. Talking while live streaming is a good thing. So folks know what's going on and there's something happening and attention spans can be kept. With that said, I just talk to myself all the time. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. But still, I, I, I'm I, married. I've been married for about five, six years. And I've learned that my tendency to uh, state my thoughts as questions can be confusing to other people. <laughs> and it has been something that I've had to be more careful about in my relationship because my partner has a tendency to want to answer questions. And so like, if I'm asking questions all the time, they're like, I don't know how to answer this. Why are you asking me this? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So anyway, all right. Uh, let me do, I'm gonna do, I mean, this is, this is, this is, that's a minor thing. It's not great, but they blend together. That's an amazing thing. I'm so glad we have it. Add that second number there in the argument. We're good. I'm going to add the walk animation next. The arms, because I don't have the arms done in the walk animation. I think I'm going to do that, and then I'll see how the blending can work together, because... I don't want to like try to fix it. It's great and blends together. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, I sometimes I do like I'm not as satisfied with something as I could be. <laughs> like I could just say maybe save this for another time. But but I also get determined and I want to you know I want to finish it out. But let's just do the walk so that way I know what I'm actually blending into and if it jumps there too. So for the walk animation, uh, the drawing that I used the other day, oh, I lost it again. Let me pull up my history. It should be up here somewhere. I don't know which one of these it is with these numbers. Sorry for the bright screen. I will try to, there it is. Okay, let me put this in my reference. Program. So bright. Sorry for the flashbang. Nobody deserves that, but it happens. All right, so we actually start around the high. So like the contact position is like there and there. So there's contact one, there's contact two. 
So it starts out on high. The arms are tough because they're really weirdly designed. And that's just true. It actually makes me think that T-Pose would be better as a starting place. Maybe I do that. All right, let me hit a save. Let me do to get to a uh, commit to GitHub. I'm actually gonna hop into Blender and see if I can't apply um, uh, the T pose because that's actually gonna make this a lot easier. Uh, I'm gonna say run and walk animations. Run is run draft one is complete and there is code to blend between walk and run it's a bit glitchy but it works all right commit it now i'm actually going to go into blender because the model is not on a t-pose and i think it really should be um now in Blender, I don't even think it, I think it will be at a T-pose, I think, maybe. I just need to get it to save as such. Yeah, see, it's in a T-pose here, and this is the same thing. Like if I save this as it is, and I come into Godot, it'll be like, oh, I'm updating things, I'm making changes. Take your time, Blender. Don't worry. Or Godot. It's all right. Okay, so there it imported that. Oh, did it break the numbers again? It did. Ugh. That's so annoying. So that's been happening where it breaks when I import it, I think I need to reevaluate how I set up. Oh my gosh. Cannot show on a null value. Ugh, this is super annoying. So every time I update it now, but the labels are still there. Oh, so the, the references get broken. Wait, why are you saying, sending those emotes? Uh, is that, so that's on, on these, on the body parts, no, up here. Sorry, I'm just trying to like get my, it, it just, it messes some things up. Here, the mesh isn't assigned. The labels are still there, but the positions change. So the way that this is set up right now is we have these damage labels, the things that float next to each body part. They're actually children of this instanced scene. If we come to the instance, they're not actually in the instance, which maybe they should be. And somehow it moves them. And then what also happens, because these are instances in these body parts, whenever I save a new version, it replaces the references to those body parts, which is pretty annoying. So that means I have to come through here and I have to re-reference all of them. So this is the body. I wish it could just find them and like reconnect them. This is a pretty annoying workflow. If I'm being honest. And I'm not sure why the positions, where's the mesh variable definition? 
the mesh variable definition is on a class script. So we have the body part script right here. This is what we're looking at, body part script. And we have mesh export variable mesh mesh instance 3D. That's where it's defined. And then the uh, alien is an instant scene. It has the animation player. It has the armature, the skeleton. I think I need to put these damage labels in the instant scene if I don't want them to get messed up. So I think that would fix that. However, if I wanted to um, get the references here or the, uh, the exported variable here to stay, the assignment, I don't know how to do that. But it would be nice if I didn't have to do it every time. I guess it's not the worst thing, but it's a little annoying. So now it's going to work, but the numbers are in the wrong place. So I think what I'm going to do, there's a lot of things to think about here. I will say it looks so much better without the numbers. Those numbers are so hideous. I hate the numbers. <laughs> the numbers look so bad. Still not really sure what to do about UI overall. But what I could do, the numbers look so good. Frank, you're so nice. You're always being so nice. I, you know, and I didn't intend for them to look good. I just put them there for like debug purposes, really. What I need is a way to tap and the internet died. The internet straight suicided. Sorry, internet. I miss you. I love you. Sorry about that. The internet totally dropped out there. Uh, I'm just going to add in this note. Debug tool. We're back, though. Debug tool. Um, turn numbers, turn hit points on off. That would be a nice debug tool. So at least I've got a note for that to ever happen again. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this. We made a commit before I imported it. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to say saving to revert after lender import. Importing messed something up that it shouldn't have to. Saving to revert. I probably don't even need to do this because it's probably just going to discard it. Maybe not. All right, commit that. And then I'm going to revert this. Come back here. You can make a crude solution by matching the name of the body part to one of the labels and then import the one that matches. Hmm. interesting well, let me make sure this is back to normal it is thank you github this is an interesting idea I almost understand it so I'm gonna take the damage labels the numbers I'm gonna cut it this was the left leg and I'm gonna try to put it in the instance or was that the left arm? 
I'm going to try to paste it into the instance itself. Which means I'm going to have to refer to them differently. So right now, where do the damaged labels, where are they referenced in what code? It's probably in this UI effects code. Right? Wait, where do these, where do these get pointed to? I actually don't know. Cut arm right, paste it in here. This might help. Cut damage body, paste it in here. Cut leg left, paste it in there. Hopefully this makes it part of the instance, which won't mess up its positions. This might mess up its positions now, even. Let me, let me let the error happen. And then maybe that'll help me find where these are. There's no error. <laughs> it's just not an error. There has to be an error. There's no error. There we go. Damage label dot text. What is damage label? Oh, I'm assigning the labels. Gotcha. So we'd have to redo that just like I redo the other thing. But what I could do is instead of assigning them, well, I guess I'd want to just not name them. Hmm. Can I just give them all the same name? Can I just say damage label and call this damage label? Oh, dang. So you can do something like name ends with arm left or whatever. Mesh equals label arm left or whatever for all body parts. Oh. Interesting. You can do ends with? You can have the same name if you don't use the unique percent thing. Really? Oh, shoot. That makes so much sense. You're a genius. I'll still want to do what you're saying for the other parts. Gotcha. This makes so much sense. Makes sense. It just makes sense that this would fix that problem. Makes sense. For the labels, but that still doesn't... So, I mean... That won't work. That'll work for the damage labels, but what it won't work for is the body parts. Because the body parts, I still have to reset every time I import it. This will work for the damage labels, but these are all not nested. Unless I did nest them into a node. I guess I could do that. And I could name the node something unique in there. Assuming Blender wouldn't get confused when it tries to import it. I don't know. Um, so we want to say, instead of damage label, my brain is twisting up, we want to say, mesh, or like I need to get a reference to this. Um, the way I got a reference to the animation, 
my brain's getting twisted up just a little bit, was I just did dollar sign alien slash animation player. So we want to say dollar sign alien skeleton or armature skeleton 3D. How did I even get that reference? I don't even know how I got that reference. Maybe I dragged it from here. I don't know. So we just we just talk about it like it's in the node tree. Okay. So I'll say Which I guess this will be. I mean, this is a class script, so if it's global, but it, no, but it's in. Oh, but now it has to go above itself, so I would kind of need to say like get tree or something. Oh man, this is getting confusing. Because that other thing is. No, it's on the player. Oh, but it is. It's a child of it. Oh man. No, but that's okay. Wait, is it? Oh my god. No, it is. Hmm. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting confused. Uh. Okay, alien. I'm just. Gonna, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm just gonna try it anyway. Instead of animation player, we would say something quite different. Why did the message not come through? Do your body parts have a reference to the player? Oh, there it is. Do your body parts have a reference to the player? Yes. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Oh! Nice. So then we would just say player. Nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, player. Now, would I want to, I wouldn't, I, okay. So I could do, can I just do a bunch of dots for this? I don't even know. I'm still not sure I know how to do it, but that, that, that's definitely the path. I guess I do player dot and then start the reference. So like dollar sign alien slash player dot get node then your path. Oh gotcha. Wow, thank you. And this is damage label alien slash armature slash skeleton 3D. Get that note. What's up, Donnie? Are <laughs> we getting it? Okay, there is there is an extra thing. So I have to say, not only that, welcome Donnie. Good to see you. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for stopping in. We gonna we gonna try. We're gonna try to get that note. Apparently I turned off wrapping at some point so that's that needs to be fixed player get node alien armature skeleton 3d and then within that i need to find the mesh so would i just like do this <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Maybe it will. Mesh dot get node. Like I'm thinking like a folder tree. I don't know. Uh, and then it would be damage label. And then if I want to get text from that, like the properties of that, Oh man. Expected statement found indent instead. Yeah. 
I don't think it's gonna understand a colon there. It definitely won't work. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's 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 not gonna work. <laughs> that's gonna go ahead and not work. <laughs> I guess I could have it be like a, hmm. Hmm. Because I can't put it within here. Okay, maybe this idea isn't gonna work. We're deep in it. We're deep in tons of nested steps within steps of things. I don't even know how to ask this. GD script. Get node. With. A variable. Name within it oh that's not that's not the way to do it how can i use a string variable to select a node in gd script not really why not use get children to store the nodes in an array and arrange them that way get children Returns an array of references to nodes children. I don't know if this really helps me. This is a tricky situation. Ooh, we got some, we got some, something to try. You got a plus in there? You got a plus in there? What is this? What is this? As the node path. Name dot split. What have I typed? I mean, it's not giving me an error of any kind yet. We gotta run into something to see if it works. Okay, it doesn't work. Out of bounds, get index two on base packed string array. Fascinating, fascinating. Whatever this is doing, fascinating. Player get node, skeleton 3D alien. I love that the dot dot dot, does that work? Or did you just do the dot dot dot. Okay, you t Okay, I was like, does that really work? Got it. Alien. Uh, armature. Skeleton 3D. And then, oh, I see what you're doing. So it's like starting with the, the word alien. Hey, potato, welcome, good to see you. I don't even know how to explain what I'm doing right now. But I will, I will. <laughs> I see, so we're saying put an underscore in there so it knows to look for alien and then an underscore. And then add an underscore after the alien before the plus. So like this. Even though we have the underscore here in name dot split. Out of bounds in out of bounds get index two. On base pack string array. 
Player get node, alien armature, skeleton 3D. Out of bounds, get index two. What name split underscore two? Not sure if it should be two or one. Oh, maybe it's one. Gets the part of the name that's after the underscore, which is arm left or whatever. That's awesome. That is so useful. All right, let's see if one helps. It does! What? Okay, wait. Oh, I gotta change this other one too. Dude, it works though. What? Split. Packed string array. Delimiter string. Allow empty bool max split integer so what you have us doing here is just doing the delimiter what is a delimiter what does that word mean like in the world a sequence of one or more characters specifying the boundary between separate independent regions in plain text oh that makes sense. Mathematical expressions are other data streams. So that's why we're saying that's the delimiter. That's the sequence to look for the separation. So look for, so this, the underscore is the delimiter, but, and after that, look for the first thing, in this case, damage label. So like if I were to put a second thing in here, that would be two. If I were to put a third thing in here, that would be three. It's fascinating. I changed my microphone button. I pressed the wrong button on my microphone. That's why it sounded weird. So the object you're in is called area underscore arm left, split return an array of parts of the string that are separated by an underscore. So it'll return bracket. Wait, how did that just confuse me more? If the object, oh, you're, we're finished typing. <laughs> So it'll return area arm left. Then we just pick the second element of the array, which is arm left. So the object you're in is called area arm left. Split would return an array of parts of the string that are separated by an underscore. So it'll return area comma arm left oh so this so then oh because zero is is the first one so area in this example is zero arm left is one gotcha so it's just, so splitting isn't saying before or after splitting is saying create an array of things divided by by the underscores. So all the underscores that are present in the name, everything like in between the underscores becomes, or on the other sides, the underscores becomes its own array slot. Wow. Wow, that is cool. These are the kind of little coding things that like, I am just thrilled to pick up on. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Or whatever character you pass in could be a space or anything really. Wow. That's so useful. That is so very useful. Wow. What an amazing thing to learn. Thank you. What? And so then, so you're saying with this plus sign here, get node. Such a, dude, so much education happening. So much education. So we have, we're getting the node, alien armature skeleton 3D alien underscore. Only up to there. 
We don't want anything else after that yet because we're adding on to that. We want to say add on to that. It's it's interesting. So the plus the plus is interesting. It's interesting that you can add on slash damage label or you can just add on a function. We can just say add a thing to do and it's not going to be like oh you mean alien underscore name split underscore slash damage label split is pretty neat i'm glad it could be useful here yeah i'm gonna this is in my toolbox like this is now in my toolbox so useful And then I love how you can add functions. I didn't know you could add a function in the middle of a string. Well, it's not really in the middle of a string. It's like in a, whatever you call this, what would they call it? A path. I didn't know you could add functions within a path. What? And it know that it's being added to create, to craft that path. At the end, the function returns an array of strings, and we're using one string. So as far as GDScript is concerned, it's just a string. Evidently. Right. So it doesn't see it as what we're saying here. It sees it as the array that's coming through. So this is basically interpreted as, it's just weird because it like, it's weird that it can add that. Right, so this is replacing arm left or whatever. So it normally would be arm left, but because it returns the string, I see. Wow, that's so cool. So it's like, it's like a translation. It's like such a language. It's such a language. It's just like another way of saying, in my case, arm left, arm right, leg left, leg right, except now we can have it be dynamic and grab any one of those in the moment as we need it. I mean, how cool is that? I also love the face that this makes. Stormman says, Lot lost internet some time ago. No, we need to get you Starlink. Forget me, we gotta get you Starlink. You're back with helping clean up the house. All right, that's nice of you. I'm studying closely, Frank. At runtime, when it processes the function call, it'll just get back a string. That's the thing with return values. Right, it's not, it doesn't have extra fluff in there. It's just straight string. And then I just, I'm still amazed that you can just plus them together. You can just plus them together and it knows to see it as one string. It's really cool. It's really cool. And I just want to, I want to dwell on this moment because I find that so useful that we can, that we can reference things this way. Oh, Kato scripts. Yes, there's a script. Yes, indeed. We're unrolling our script. Yes, I uh, code on papyrus. Coding is magic. Coding is totally magic. Great, so now we could just copy this. This is amazing. And this is all just so I can import it more fluidly in the future. So we gotta put this down here as well. And I think those are the only places. And so we don't need damage label either. And now we've gotten rid of two variables we don't need without hard coding something in a way that is unadvisable. Oh, hold on. And now it's set index text on base null instance with value of type string.
I did it wrong this time. Oh, my. Same issue. Startup cost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I may just build a house in the country and use theirs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> when I was in the military, we used an old direct TV dish to bounce Wi-Fi 25 miles, and it was so fast. What? That's brilliant. That's very creative. I like that. You used an old direct TV dish to bounce Wi-Fi 25 miles. That is a fascinating problem solving situation. Make sure the part after the underscore matches in both the areas and meshes for all body parts. The part after the underscore matches in both the areas and the meshes. Right. Dude, that's so cool. What you're saying makes sense, and now I just have to make it work. Um, now I'm just forgetting how this code even worked. So the So it's in the no names, sorry, I forgot to mention. Why is my brain not able to put this together? The mesh, right, because the mesh is like what we're, this is the mesh. Right, these. These have to match. The area underscore body. Everything at the underscore. So here it says body. Here it says body. Leg L, leg R, arm L, arm R. They should be the same. Oh, but look at this. Area body also has a unique name here. But these others don't. That doesn't matter. First of all, that's not correct to have in general. But wait, what works? Arm works. I think it's when we hit the body. I think it might be because this body is a unique name. But I think I need this a unique name because I use it right here. That's why that's a unique name. So I wonder if that's where the error is coming from, is since it's a unique name, it's not being detected the same way. I need to find something. I could be wrong. Oh no, that's that doesn't hurt the body. That's not it. Am I understanding everything correctly? Can you check if the air shows the full string? Oh, please show the full string. I beg you. Body part. Damage detected, node not found, alien armature, skeleton 3D, alien leg R, damage label. Relative to root main scene player. Wow, and it's showing it when it pieces it back together. That's pretty cool. Leg R, damage label. Oh, oh, yep, yep, yep. Look, right there. I didn't name this one correctly. Let's go. Nice. Wow. I just, I didn't I didn't think that there would be more explanation for the error. I was like, they already gave me the error. Where is there more information? There's more information. Okay, that's it. Let's go.
No more airs. I just, I'm just like, I forget that there's more info to be given. Why would they not give me everything I need to know? It's like, I do give you everything you need to know. You just have to find it. Ooh, magical. Okay, cool. Beautiful. No problems, no crashes, no errors. Let's go. Dude, this alien is scary. <laughs> like, it is like, like, with the running animations, it's just like kind of emphasizing how horrifying this is. Like, like, look how small the cow is and how giant this alien is. Just like, we need some like, like, we need some like loud footsteps. Debugging can be painful sometimes. Oh man. Whenever, and it's fine. It's fine. Like, there are streams that I'm here by myself, right? Sometimes people trickle through, but, and, and even if a Godot genius is here, maybe they're busy. But there are times where I am just here on my own, debugging, and I assure you, it's painful. <laughs> but, but, it's always a great learning experience, and I'm so thankful. I am. I am. It's nice when folks can be here, though, but I, I never expect it. What a, what a wonderful treat. So lucky to have you here. Awesome. Okay, so this was all. Why was I doing all this? Why was I doing all this? I was doing all this because I want um, to be able to import this model from Blender without messing up a bunch of things that I have to redo. Okay, that wasn't a great explanation. Uh, the main thing that this that we just added will fix. Oh, come on! What are you talking about? You're looking at me. Come on now. You don't know if that's true. You don't know if that's true. You don't know if that's true. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. I can take a compliment. Yes, I can take a compliment. Thank you. Uh, happy Christmas. A happy Christmas. Is it Christmas? Did it happen already? I'm so behind. I don't think it is, though. But yes! <laughs> happy Christmas! Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I like am so out of touch with the calendar. The general idea of a calendar. The only time I see a calendar is when I'm setting the game jam date on itch.io and they don't put any they don't put any holidays on there. Um Okay, so now we've got the damage labels set up with this awesome dynamic reference. Now as for the meshes themselves, I wonder if we can set that up too. So we have it right now as an exported variable, a mesh instance that we assign. So like if I come to the body part inspector here, we've got the mesh and I have to assign this. So if I import a new model from Blender, I'm gonna have to set this every time. But like I can't help but think that your idea will work here as well. So I don't have to assign it every time. It's just gonna look for that. So if I wanted to set that up, I would go to the body part script. And instead of saying that mesh equals this exported variable that I'm going to set later, instead, it equals all of that stuff that you have me added. The string that with the split that pieces together. Right? So if I say... The difference is, is I can't do that slash thing, but I don't need to. We don't need to. So we would say variable mesh equals, so get rid of this, variable mesh equals expected identifier after dot, oh yeah, no dot. Variable mesh equals player get node instead of alien armature skeleton 3D. Actually, that is it. That would be it. This would literally be all. 
except we don't really want to do the split thing, do we? Actually, we do. Actually, we don't. Actually, because it's looking for... We actually don't want to do that. First of all, it would be... Actually... <laughs> Actually, I guess this is what we want. What if this just works? Okay, it doesn't. Out of bounds, get index one. Now earlier, Psychonic fixed this problem by having us change what that value was. In this case, it'd be zero, no to be one. <laughs> I feel like the difference, there's a difference, and I'm gonna realize it. I'm gonna realize it eventually. Because all that this is, is fetching the name of this in this instance. And we, well, but we had to compare it to something. I think the difference is we're not, we're not comparing it to something. I feel like this doesn't make sense. So I don't think this works here. I think we do have to define it specifically here. We can't just say variable is this. I don't think this makes sense. As much as I wanted that to work, I think that's a little ridiculous. But it was fun to imagine for a couple moments. I think I just have to reconnect that every time. Yeah, get out of here. You get out of here. If you're done, check the string in errors or print it. I will. I will. I think I'm just using it in a different situation. Thanks for all your help, Psychonic. Uh, however, however you participate in this stream is something I deeply appreciate and value. And yeah, take good care. And uh, yeah, I hope the rest of your day goes as great as it can. You might need to do on ready before that line you had. <laughs> You're like, well, actually, I could help you. I could help you. Because it makes sure all the children are in there first. Mm. I think I broke all the references. I did break all the references. It makes sure all the children are in there first. Well, I'll try it again then. Well, I guess I might as well try it again then. So it was... No Cortana. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. This ain't no Windows 11. Uh, here, we say variable. Okay, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. For real. My psychonic, thank you. I think I might try to put that into a short. I might try to put that into a short. We'll see. If I can, if I can edit it to be explained well, I will put that in a short. That great tip you gave me. Thanks so much. Uh, so I'm going to say variable mesh equals player get node all that blah 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 and you're saying make it on ready see if that at least doesn't cause an initial problem oh <gasps> it works what it works Dude, I don't have to set them every time now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Another, another save. Another save. As you're leaving, as you're walking out the door, you said, you said, all right, I gotta go. Take good care. Take good care. Sorry, I can't hang out. Use at on ready. Use at on ready. Okay, goodbye. At on ready. Okay. <laughs>
Man, that's cool. That's cucumber cool. What? Oh, man. All right, let's go. So now that that's sorted, um, wow. How do I, I can't include that in the short. Like, how do I even reference that? So now I'm using this all over the place because I need to reference a mesh instance. And before I was referencing this mesh instance with an export variable, which meant I had to assign it every single time that I wanted to update uh, that mesh. Anytime I made a change to that mesh or I wanted to update it, I had to reassign it. But now it's just going to look for everything after that underscore and it's going to check to see is this the unique one that I'm looking for and then we'll be good. I love it. Did I explain that right? I was trying to get a cut so I could edit it later or take so I could edit it later. I don't know if I explained that right. Now, instead of assigning it every time, I can have this split function check for what's after the underscore instead of having to tell it via assigning, which is awesome. At on ready made that possible. Okay, that's enough of that. Wow, what a day. So now that that's set up, uh, I'm gonna make a GitHub commit and then I can really test this because the true test of this functionality is going to be if I can save it from Blender and I don't have to change anything and everything is just the same. That would be fantastic. So, uh, yeah, let's try it. Let's make a GitHub commit. Specifically, reconfigured uh, mesh uh, alien mesh and damage label um, references. We'll just say reps. Psychonic Joe to the rescue. This must be codified in the GitHub repo. Repo. Am I ever going to stop saying repo? GitHub repo. GitHub repo. GitHub repo. Okay. <laughs> also, the internet is being nice, so I'm going to hide the bitrate. So Iconic Joe to the rescue, codified for all eternity in the GitHub repo. Uh, instead of setting the aliens damage labels and mesh uh, instances with an exported variable that has to be frequently reassigned now now using the split function especially the references are dynamically discovered and set within the code. Saving before testing via import from Blender. Okay.
Let's go to Blender. Now, of course, I, the whole reason I did all this was so that I could animate more easily the arms of the character. The Blender file has the character's arms in T-Pose, but when I go to export it to Godot, the arms are not in T-Pose. So I need to figure out how to get it to be set in Blender to the T-Pose. Now, Storm Run had helped us with this the other day, but I didn't like follow through with it because I just realized I didn't care about the T-Pose. But now I realize I do care about the T-Pose and I would very much like to sort it out. So, um, so I'm gonna save it just so we can test the code that we just added in. I'm gonna hit save, which means we come into Godot, it's gonna re-import everything, which typically, breaks all those assignments that I made when I did the export of the variables. But now that we have uh, the split function helping us identify those things, I'm hoping uh, that everything will just be normal. But I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. We, got, we just got a smattering of errors. This kind of happens for other reasons, I think. I feel like this is not relevant. So let's hit play and see if it works. Yes, it does. The positions aren't in the wrong places. No errors. Friggin' brilliant. Friggin' brilliant. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Friggin' brilliant, man. Dang. All right. So now, if I want to try to animate these arms a little better, I really need to have it export in Tpose because it's not actually exporting in Tpose. So even though it's in Tpose here in Blender, uh, Here's what the alien looks like, exported. Not in T-Pose. That ain't no T-Pose. I am not exactly sure why it isn't in T-Pose. I'm also not sure why it's rotated so far forward on the x-axis. Doesn't need to be. There's no reason for that. So, somehow, I need to get this to be set. It's almost like it's not exporting the pose. We also have this saying, pose position. Rest, mm, look, pose and rest are, are flipped. Yep, Stormrun gave us a video for solving this exact problem. We got this. We can look back at that video that Stormrun told us about and we'll have this sorted in no time. Which reminds me, do I have Storm Run given like Blender credit? I don't think I do. Tech support, CC character rigging. Okay, that's that's something. That's pretty close actually. That's actually pretty much it. There's so many credits I need to get right. Y'all are amazing. Okay, so let's look at that video. Um. The only way I'm going to find it is if I look at the live stream from the other day. That's the only way I'm going to find it. So I'm going to go to the channel and pull up that live stream from yesterday. Oh, I made a thumbnail for this. I haven't added it yet, though. And find the point. where we had that video. I remembered there was like a girl in a dress in the video. So as long as we can find that. There's one of the videos Storm Run gave us. And then I just gotta look for the other one. Oh yeah, and then that cool game that uh, 
someone told us about. Who told us about that cool game? I'm on I'm on high ADD today. I'm okay with it. Was it Dissident? I thought it was Dissident. Rocket Knight. That's a game I gotta try. Looking, oh, nope, that wasn't it. Looking for the video with the girl in a dress. There it is. Set current pose to rest pose. Got it. Search it, paste it. Let's go. Hello guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to change the rest position of your character imported from the XAML. So I imported this character from the XAML in T pose. But if you select the rest position, you can see That's that my problem. it's in A pose. So to set this T pose as the default rest pose, first of all, you select the armature, delete any keyframe you have here. Then Select the armature. Got the armature. I don't think I have any keyframes. Want to select the armature and the mesh and press Ctrl A. Select the armature and the mesh. Oh, I'm in pose mode. I think we want to be in object mode. There we go. So apply. Want to select the armature and the mesh and press Ctrl A to apply all transforms. Now by is that it? I just didn't apply the transforms? ...and the mesh and press uh -uh. Ctrl A to apply all transforms. Now by pressing the numpad period key, it will take us to where the object is. The next thing we are going to do is come to the mesh, go to your modifiers and apply. And then we select Go to the mesh. Hmm. So I've got multiple meshes. Go to the modifiers. This armature one. I think I need to apply the armature. Applied modifier was not first. That's true. At the armature, we go into the pose mode. Make sure everything is selected. You can press A. Go to your pose. And then apply pose. Apply pose as rest pose. So we want to be in pose mode. So grab the armature. Go to pose mode. Select the armature, pose, apply pose as rest pose, but this isn't the right pose. So that was a mistake, probably. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that. Um... I'm a little confused. So if I go back to object mode, and I select the meshes, the armature is applied. But now if I come to the armature, so I think I need to set the rest position. I think that's what I have to do. Is I have to actually set it myself. Can I change pose when rest position is enabled? Well, my. I'm hitting undo. We're undo apocalypsing here.
Okay, post position is almost back. Now it's back to T. In object mode, if I select just the mesh, we look at the modifier, armature is still there on each of these. Actually, not all of them. Not the body. Oddly enough. I'm just going to undo everything. We're just undoing all the way back to the beginning. We're going all the way back. We're starting over. It's a do-over. So get out of pose mode. Go to object mode. The body does have an armature modifier on it. I also think I need to apply all of these anyway, by the way. So let me apply these while we're here. And so the first thing he was having us do was apply the transformations. Select everything. And if I do apply the transforms, we still got the T-pose. Now, if I What? Apply the armature. So I've got the left selected here. If I apply this armature on the left arm, that doesn't do it to all of them. So I want to make sure I apply it. Oh, look, and it even has like this little wrench next to it. That's cool. I didn't know that. So that like shows me that it has something that needs to be applied potentially. So click on that wrench. Oops. Uh, apply. Apply. So I've applied all those. Now the next step that he says. Yes. Then I want to select the armature and the mesh and press Ctrl A to apply all that. transforms. Now the next thing we are going to do is come to the mesh, go to your modifiers. We applied apply, our armature. And then we select the armature. We go into the pose mode. Select the armature. Go to pose mode. Now when I do that, it unselects a apply. bunch of stuff. And then we select the armature. We go into the pose mode. On his, it still has everything selected. So I don't know if I need to reselect everything or not. Make sure everything is selected. Make Compress. sure everything is selected. Okay, all right. Everything's selected. E. Go to your pose. And then up. And now apply this as rest pose. I think this is going to be good. Apply. Apply pose as pose as rest pose. Nice. Okay. And now we come back to pose mode. Yes, rest position matches pose position. Got it. All right, save it. Woof. Just got to do it in the right order. Save it. Now hop into Godot. I expect to see this alien teeing it. Teeing up, teeing off. Oh. All kinds of fun errors. T pose.
Oh my god. Errors galore. Oh shoot. It broke all the keyframes. Uh oh. Hmm. Okay, this this broke a lot of things. This broke a lot of things. It changed the node structure of the scene. It obliterated. So it moved the mm, it moved the damage labels very severely. So it broke those. And these are like in purgatory. Like I found that when this happens, there's nothing I can do to bring these back. But I could be wrong. So I can't right click on them. I can't left click. I mean, I can rename them, but I can't drag them around. They're just like these phantom nodes. If I look at the keyframes, they are still there. Um, and we can, in fact, see the armatures are animating. The armature is actually animating. The mesh is no longer connected to the armatures. We got some problems. We got some problems. Why would the mesh no longer be associated with the armature? I don't even understand where the bones are. The bones aren't even like showing up anymore. Because there's no more skeleton. Oh, here's a skeleton 3D. There's a skeleton 3D. So th it seems like the mesh is no longer children of the skeleton. <sighs> it's all messed up. So whatever we did over here, divorced the armature from the body part, which maybe is related to the fact that we applied those modifiers. And indeed, I mean, if I come over here in pose mode and I move something, Can I change pose when rest position is enabled? So pose position. Yeah, see, they're not attached anymore. So we need to reassociate these. Okay, we're gonna undo apocalypse once again. We're square oneing it. This time, I'm not going to apply the armatures. I mean, that those instructions were very specific in that video. They said to apply the modifiers. What if I don't? What if I'm in pose mode? And I say, apply pose as rest pose without applying the modifiers. So this happens. The armature indeed stays in those positions. But now it's not linked correctly to the arm positions. But I bet 
if we go into Godot, it's not going to have broken references anymore. So I think what needs to happen is we need to recreate those armature modifiers after applying the rest position. So we want to apply the rest position and then reconnect the parent to the armature. I think that's what we have to do, if I were to guess. Uh, to do that, I'm... I mean, I don't know. It's a tough one. I wonder if So, if we, okay, maybe, maybe this can be pulled off. I'm going to select all. Or I'm going to go into object mode. Apply our transforms. Make sure that's all squared away. Also, what if I just do that? I'm not saying that's going to work. I feel like it's not, but what if I just do that and set this as the rest pose? It's still gonna snap back into the other pose? Yeah, okay. So if I apply the modifiers, really I only need to do it with the arms, technically. But let's do it with it all. So select all of these. Uh, yeah, apply the decimate. Apply the armature. Apply the decimate. Apply the armature. Keep going down the line. Uh, something I'm also going to do here is I'm going to back it up before I start experimenting with this more. I'm going to back up this file so I have it. I need to name my backups better. I've got a couple other backups that I didn't name well that this will have an effect on. So I'm just going to grab this file. I'm even just going to make a backups folder. Backups. Player alien free T pose. Paste that in. But I already saved it. So what you need to do is you need to control Z all of this immediately. Control Z the crap out of it. Control Z it so hard. Right? Save it now. Now make the backup. Now make the backup. So here uh, if I select the armature I'm not sure where the pose mode, rest mode thing went. I'm only a little afraid. Because there was that 
pose mode, rest mode thing, and I'm not currently seeing it. We're undoed all the way. We're all the way undone. We're sure. Yeah, we are. Save it. Now Godot is going to have a thousand connections. So I feel like I'm going to need to use GitHub to revert. Or maybe it'll just go back to normal. I doubt that. I severely doubt that because it, it messed with the file structure. Uh, when it was importing the other one. So, this is all kinds of messy. Oh, it's gonna take some time. Oh, it's gonna take some time. Our internet is all stable, so it can take some time. Okay. All right. No, it's fine. I am here, hanging out, waiting for Godot. As one does. And while I wait for Godot, as I wait for Godot, I will turn to a page and read it. Estragon sleeps. Vladimir gets up softly, takes off his coat, and lays it across Estragon's shoulders. Then starts walking up and down, swinging his arms to keep himself warm. Estragon wakes with a start, jumps up, casts about wildly. Vladimir runs to him, Puts his arm around him. There, there. Dee Dee is there. Don't be afraid. Oh, it crashed. Honestly, totally fine with me. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna revert. the last version we have to save well I do have to save the current messy version so let's boot it up we'll save the current messy version I don't, I'm even worried I'm worried it's not gonna boot right so I might even want to push this as a commit here let me see this uh, committing to revert Blender messed things up bad. Can I commit that? I really don't want to boot it up the way that it is. It's just going to waste time. So we made that commit. Now I'm going to revert that commit. And we'll be back to safety. Assuming that the file I just saved in Blender is the same one that I originally had. I hope my undoes did enough. Undid enough. I really do. Okay, so it's re-importing it because it is different. Hopefully Things will be okay. So far, so good. Looks intact. Indeed it is. All is well. Frank, it's all good. We're back to normal. Thank the goodness. Yeah, you're right, Frank. <laughs> you're right. It will. I mean, it ended up okay. <laughs> but yeah, 
I'm getting I'm getting better at knowing how to navigate when things go or before things go wrong. <laughs> Slightly better. So this is safe. Now the Blender file, and let me just double triple check something here. In Godot, if we look at the alien, it's not going to be in T pose. Good. Armatures are all connected. Goat. Armatures are all connected. Now, the Blender file, I want to not back up this one. I want to back up. The current one. So I can make these changes in Blender and experiment in Blender without worrying that we can't do what I just did. So now I've got a backup of the player alien pre T pose attempt. This is all just to make animating it easier. We'll see. So. I'm going to restart Blender. I want I want to be fresh. I want to be fresh to death, but alive and not dead. Okay, open up this. There we go. Select all this. Now, I'm not getting that pop-up where I could set a rest versus I was hoping this would kind of fix that. Oh, there it is. Pose respiratory. Oh, it's right here. The data tab. Restart Blender. Got to restart Blender. Just want to restart it. Give it the old redo. Okay, now we have pose position, rest position, which is messed up. I want the rest position to be what the pose position is. But I don't want, if I follow that tutorial that we were looking at before, it's going to divorce all of the armatures from the mesh, which is devastating to our current project. So, I'm going to select, we're gonna make sure all the transforms are applied. They probably are, but we'll do it anyway. Apply transforms. Rest mode, st still not it. That's fine. Now it seems that we need to apply all of these um, armatures, but I'm gonna need to get these back. So I'm gonna apply them for now. For now, I'm gonna apply them. Ultimately, I'm going to need this back, but I'm applying it so we can make this the T pose. And then I'm going to try to reassociate it by following the other tutorial that Storm Run showed us. Okay. So now that's all together. If we come to pose mode, so I select the armature. Look at rest position. So we can see now the armature is now divorced from the mesh. And rest position is currently set. I wonder if there's a different way we can do this without divorcing it. I mean, I'll just remarry them. But so you can see that the rest position is in front and the pose is by itself. So I could come to pose mode, select all this, and say, apply as rest pose. And now they're both the same, but we have a problem because now we've separated the armatures and the mesh. So we need to re unite them. So to do that, I think I need to control P. 
This one, armature deform with automatic weights. Okay, okay. It was just loading and made me nervous. Yes, and look, now we have these wrenches here. Yes, yes, yes. This is what the other video Storm Run sent us, told us to do. So now if I come into pose mode, select the armature, go to pose, and we start bending this, it's going to bend together. This is good. So now I'm going to save it. We backed it up. So everything should be fine. I'm going to hop into Godot. And we're going to see if it explodes again. It looks good. We do have a bunch of errors, but I don't think these errors matter. Okay, but it's not over yet. First of all, this the alien's still in the front. So that's not ideal. But maybe I just have to reopen it. Yeah, maybe I just have to reopen it. Let me hit play. See where that gets us. <laughs> Explosion, I know, right? Now, I'm confused. Hey, Neil. You know, I tried to still be animating, but you know what I realized? I realized I needed the arms to be in T-pose in order for me to animate them correctly. I mean, you can see they look really weird in the run. And besides that, if I just like spam run and let go of it really quickly, the arms don't blend right. And a lot of that is because we're not starting with T-pose and I'm not animating it as cleanly as I could. So I'm trying to go from Blender and keep it in T-pose and then hop back over to Godot and reanimate it. So I thought maybe I had found a way to get it to come out in T-pose. But it hasn't yet. And so I'm just kind of exploring that. So yeah, I'm kind of still animating. Why wouldn't that be in T-pose? Like, is it, is it that Hey, what's up, Halloween King? Welcome. Good to see you. Hope you've been well. Taking care of yourself as best you can and all that. Um, if I look at the animation player here, this does have this reset here. And it could be just holding it in that reset position. But I don't know. What if I take the Blender file, just out of curiosity? If I take the Blender file and drop it in, is it in T-Pose? I'm a little shocked that that didn't work. Oh, it is. So the, the file is in T-Pose. But it's not applying it to this, which is interesting. Now, I don't really know how to create a new reset. I don't know. I would also think that this would update. I'm surprised that it doesn't. Maybe because I made an instance of this before. Armature, skeleton 3D. Show rest only. Oh, hey. Now we can go to the rest pose here. Nice. So I've got this checkbox here. Show rest only. Nice. Now, but that does break the entire animation because now it's not playing the animation. It's only forcing it into T-Pose. That's not very useful, is it? What I really want is to be starting from T-Pose 
as I'm animating. But it seems to be stuck outside of it. Now on this reset one, what if I just burn all those down? It doesn't even look different. Nothing changes. So that's not holding it in some position. That's a little surprising. That because I didn't set it to T-Pose to begin with. Because in Blender, I mean, there's not even a version of it anymore. Where it's got it in front. So, like, where is it even getting that from? It's like Godot is internally... I wonder if I... Close Godot. Don't save it. And I reopen it. I don't know why. I, I'm i just going to try it. I'm just surprised that it's... Because I've essentially updated the model. Right? Haven't I? You know, maybe I need to like apply transformations or something? Oh, there we go. Right? No. Show rest only is marked on. <laughs> no. That didn't do it. Dang. Well, maybe I just let go of being in T-pose. So weird. Hmm. Just don't quite understand it. Don't really know what else to say. I, I kind of thought that would do it. I mean, I could live without it being in T-pose. I guess I kind of have to. Doesn't feel like I have much other choice here. I'm a bit disappointed. We could say the reset is in T-pose. Like, I wonder if I say... Show rest only. And I tell it... Add reset values. And then I turn this off. It doesn't stay in T-Pose. What if I record all these positions? Except I don't want this rotation. Well, I don't want that to be the rotation. If I said it's... Wait, it's not... Okay. If I set all of these... as the keyframes. So confused. Rotate this back to the zero position. Record that keyframe. So now that's the reset position, for whatever that's worth, which we're not using. Oh, because do we still have... We do have show rest only on still. Okay. So that doesn't actually record it in that position, unfortunately. It 
it's literally just showing the rest position. All right, I guess if I want it to be in T pose, I'm going to have to put it in there myself. But it's so weird that I can drag the Blender file in here and it's already in T pose. When this file that's right here that's going for hands are going forward. It's uh It's not because it's referencing that same file. I really should have started with Tpos. I tried, but I gave up and I thought, you know what? We can just do this later. I shouldn't have done it later. I should have done it right then and there. Made sure I put it in Tpos. That is a learned lesson for sure. Um, It's not the end of the world. I can still animate it without that. But I would really like, oh, this happened. This is a bug I've been getting sometimes. <laughs> My cursor goes away. I have no cursor. Oh, it's just visually not there, but it's also not. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No, it's fine. Good. No, it's fine. I'm going to save it. We got to close it again. I feel like at this point we are in many ways waiting for Godot. I mean, it's just a bug. It will sort itself out regardless. random page. It's better to give it to him. I'll give it to him. He picks up the hat and tenders it at arm's length. You must put it on his head. Tell him to take it. It's better to put it on his head. I'll put it on his head. It's an absurd play. I don't know if you know, but it's it's a very absurd play. I didn't really delineate between the characters there. Whoops, you just have to trust me. But those were different characters. Okay. Can I move around now? Yeah, I, I'm i gonna let go of the T-pose thing. And basically, I just have to animate it without that. I gotta let it go, I gotta let it go. I spent too much time on this, guys. I spent too much time on this. I gotta just let it go. We gotta just start animating it. I got fixated on the T-pose thing. I would like to solve it. I would. I really, really would. Because how can this, how can it not, how can it not? Because see right here, look at the top left. I guess I'm not letting it go. Look at this. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> you can't look at that. But it's important. So if I hover over this, it says alien three dot blend. Alien three dot blend. If I drag alien three dot blend into here, it's depots. But it's not updating the existing one to the depots. Yeah, we got Halloween King came through. X Dreamer family. Not that I'm identifying you as an ex-dreamer. I apologize for that. I just mean family, family formed during dreams heyday, so to speak. Um, 
yeah, I'm just going to let it go, I guess, and just do the animation. I don't really understand why it's not updating. I'm glad I figured out the armature exporting thing. You know, a part of me wonders, I mean, I mean, it's amazing that it let me even drag that in here. It'd be pretty cool if I could get it to apply to that one. Clear inheritance. That can't be a good thing. You know, if there was some way to like... Update what it's pointing to. That would be nice. It should be doing it on its own. I mean, if I come to Blender, right? Like, let's let's just for the sake of example. If I come to Blender, and I go to the uh, material. Uh, we're in pose mode, object mode, body, material. I don't know if it'll really overwrite it anyway. What if I remove the material from the body and I save that? And we let go Godot import it. Look, it replaces it. So it knows to replace that, but what it doesn't know to replace is the arms. And you know, if I bring in the Blender file, it too will have a white body, but the arms are in T. It's kind of weird, right? Could try applying transforms. Really shouldn't make any difference. You know, since, again, I can drag it in and drop it. Just don't know about it. It don't know about that T pose. But that's, as far as Blender is concerned, that other pose doesn't even exist anymore. And like, I guess out of curiosity, like if I were to pose this in some other way. So come to the armature, pose it. Let's just move it up like that. Save it that way. Hop into Godot. I mean, that arm ain't gonna go up, right? Doesn't go up. So it's almost like the armature isn't updating. And then if I drag the Blender file in, the arm also isn't going up there either. Why? It's so weird. I mean, here, I guess it kind of makes some sense because the rest position is still the T pose, right? So I'd have to apply that position in order for that to update, which is a bunch of effort I'm not going to bother with here. It's just all very mysterious why it's not updating it. 
That I thought that might make a little more sense if I did it that way, but it didn't it didn't explain anything to me. All right. Well, I'm just going to keep to I mean, I I mean, I should wrap it up here. But I'm going to animate the arms. That's that's where this all began. So right now, I just wanted to get some of the arms animated a little better. I might work on this on the Monday member stream, the rest of the animation, we'll see. But so we've got a walk animation and a run, but the walk animation doesn't have arm movement and the run animation has some really weird arm movement. And I wanted to be in T-pose before animating it, but I guess I just gotta let that go. I guess I just gotta let that go. So let's fix the arm animations on run make up for walk, call it a day. No T-pose. I don't know. Okay, so arm, uh, we need to be in here. Let's get a good perspective. Open up the animation tools. Let's get that walk looking a little walkier. So here's my references. Uh, we start in this case with the high, which is this one. So the arms need to be kind of doing one of these. So the leg that's up, its arm needs to be down. So I'm going to grab a skeleton. We're going to hit a save here. Edit the bones. I'm going to get the right arm. And we're going to put it down. Now it's very important that I don't animate the shoulder. The shoulder is super messed up. The right arm is tough because the right arm, this is a hard part. Because the right arm, the way I've set it up, this is why I want it in T-pose. It clips through the entire leg as it is. So I have to make sure that I actually tee it out. I put it in a T-pose myself. Approximately. Something like that to start with. And then if we look at it from the back, and now I start moving it back, it makes a little more sense. Anyway, so we want this to be, next time I do it first. Next time I do the T-pose so first. I don't know when next time's gonna be. This is gonna be my player character for a while. I mean, there's gonna be humans in this. So, all right, put this back. Uh, the arm needs to be bent a little bit. Let's go to the side again. Maybe like there. Oh, we lost the keyframe, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to keyframe this rotation and that rotation. Did that get messed up? I don't think so. Okay. So there's that. Now for the neck, oh, the left arm, the other arm. I'm gonna bring it This one I don't have to worry about. This one doesn't clip in a weird way, I don't think. Yeah, this one's already in a good spot. So for the left arm, we want it to be up, doing a little pumping motion. Let's bend it.
and then keyframe that. And now we've got those arms. Next animation is the contact. So now they just kind of do more of what they were doing. They go a little further in their respective directions. Uh, I'm going to clear the keyframes that are currently there. So I'm going to get rid of the left keyframes, left arm keyframes, and the right arm keyframes. So I don't have to start from the beginning again. It would appear that we're animating the shoulder, which is not okay. The shoulder. All right, okay, we are back. Uh, if you are watching this after the live stream, it just skipped in a weird way. Uh, I don't know, I think that was just like regular internet problem. <laughs> Not even my usual internet problem, just a regular one. I had to reboot my modem. Thanks for hanging tight. I'm getting back to this animation, let's do it. Uh, how y'all been, how was your break? I hope you were doing well. Uh, I just, you know, only mildly panicked and uh, fixed the internet, but we're back, we're good. Let's get this, we're gonna get this arm animation sorted out. If it's the second, third thing I do, it'll be done. All right, so we're getting these arms swinging. Uh, I don't remember what part of it I was at. We're at the contact. Swing the arms back a little bit. I'm just going to hit the keyframes on it. Oh, I think we're at the low position now. So actually now I want the arms to kick back a bit more. Or go the other way. Oh, we're flipping them. Wait, aren't we? Are we flipping them? Or do we? when do we flip? We flip at the passing. I think passing is when the flip happens. And then on the high is when it changes. So I think right now, it's actually a little confusing because the animation example ends here. But I think we can just deduce it, right? So if we start with our arms there, we move up, they're gonna start coming down now. I don't think they pass yet though. All right, I need to look at the, I need to look at the other animation. So over here, if we start with the high, which is this one. This is the high. So our arms are out, they're coming down. Yeah, it's the, It's that passing. Well, the passing, is it in the legs? I mean, this is the legs passing. Why is this so confusing to me? This is like very confusing. In the run. Okay, I need to figure this out. So if I was gonna line these up, it would be like this. And then these on the end here are these ones. It kind of like doesn't do those. That's that one. So actually, I guess we'd be, I'm so confused. I can't wrap my head around this for the life of me. I kind of need to look at a different, I can't, I can't do this. I gotta look up full walk cycle animation steps. I can't like try to piece it together. Like give me the whole cycle. Just show me the whole thing. Yeah, that, yeah, that, give me that. Give me that right there. Okay. 
OK. So if I'm starting from the left arm in the back on high, that's here. OK. And this one has, so it's called contact recoil instead of down, passing high point. OK. Got it. I think I get it. I think I got it. Let me make sure I reconnect the chat properly. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just double check. Make sure I set set all that up right. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this walk cycle. I know it. I just know it. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't ask yet, but if you haven't. I wanted to remind you, if I did ask, it was a long time ago. Remember to hit that thumbs up button on this live stream. Smash with hyperness that thumbs up button if you haven't already. It helps more people see this video after the live stream ends. Uh, so thank you if you can do that. I really appreciate it. Uh, yay walk cycle. We're going to get this walk cycle with the arms. I want those arms moving, and I want to see how they blend into the arms in the uh run thank you for the thumbs up thank you so much thumb up this video thumb it up ding 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 thank you guys appreciate it it really does help okay i knew i didn't have chat up i was like i don't think chat is up yet okay so this is the one we're on right here so i'm coming back to the walk Now I'm gonna save Godot. I'm gonna grab the left arm. And we want it to be down a little bit. Not a big change, really. It's actually pretty similar. This comes down a bit and goes back a bit. It's actually right behind me. It's this one. And then the other arm, we want to push that arm out a little more and unbend it a little bit. So not a big change, just a little one. Update those keyframes. <laughs> I might have brought that down a little bit much. Maybe not. I'm going to not have it be quite so extreme. We are keyframing. I love keyframing. Keyframes are the best. Well, maybe motion capture is the best best, but it depends on what you need it for. That still makes keyframes, probably. Does it? I don't know. Uh, passing. So now we want the arms to go past each other. So really, it's everything that passes. The arms and the legs pass each other. That's wild. I never think about these things. So the back arm, this is a little different than this other drawing. Actually, it's not that different. I'm going to use this drawing. I just kind of wanted to orient myself with the other one. I'm going to keep kind of using this one. So I want the back arm to go down. Move the hand a little. They're long arms. They're very long arms. For the right arm, this one's actually coming in a bit, quite a bit, and it's pumping forward. It's a bit weird, but it looks OK. OK, hit a save. Sometimes Godot crashes when I'm adding these keyframes, so we got to be careful. 
the next one, now we're flipping, right? We're changing sides. So we want the left arm to be in the back and the right arm to be in the front. So right arm is going to pump all the way forward. Something like that, maybe. And the left arm adds keyframe. Oops, good don't crash. Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, specifically, especially, it's, um, whoa, my zoom got tiny. That is the tiniest zoom I've ever seen. It's amazing. Uh, let me get that zoom bigger again. It's distorted. Sometimes uh, stuff like losing internet can cause problems. So up here, right under your chat there, make sure to say exactly. So this button right here, insert key, all bones. So inserts a key of all bone poses. This is the one, if I click it sometimes, the Godot will just crash. If I add one keyframe, I haven't yet had that crash. But if I do this one, it will. But it's a really useful one because it'll just do all of the poses, but I don't always need it. But it is a helpful one. Still, we'll save just to be safe. Oh, huh. Look at that, save, safe. Oh, anyway. So, uh, so, I want the arm left for this one to be a little bit in the back. The hand or the bend isn't really changing that much for these. I do like to change them a little. I just feel like it looks better if I change them a little bit. And then so then the alternative, instead of pressing this button that keyframes them all. The alternative is I pick each uh, bone that I just moved and right behind me here, I hit this keyframe button for that one, come to the other one I did, keyframe that one, come to this one, keyframe that one, come to this, keyframe that one, which is doable. All right, so we're getting those arms animated. Honestly, it doesn't even so it so Godot is kind of guessing the rest of it. Dude, that looks great. I could keyframe the rest of them. But I mean that looks fine. <laughs> I don't think we need to keyframe any more than that. Cause there actually isn't keyframes for the rest of these. And what Godot is doing is blending the last one with the first one before it loops. Heck, save me some time. <laughs> it's a little funny. And, and part of why it's funny is because the shoulder isn't moving. The reason why the shoulder isn't moving is because the shoulder isn't actually attached. And if I start moving it you'll see that it's not attached so there's like some things that i just need to kind of fix in the non-prototype version of this game but since we're doing the prototype i'm not going to worry too much about it but look how much better this blend is look at that i can spam forward and now it doesn't um i mean it <laughs> obviously you get this weird movement where you're just like and like you can move forward even though your legs aren't passing each other so that's something to think about too like maybe to say if the player is like spamming this just to like keep it from looking silly what the run stops i don't know it's a little confusing since it's a runner game you know if it wasn't 
constantly moving forward, then this wouldn't be as much of an issue. Maybe if we had some inverse kinematics that kept the feet attached to the ground. I know I'm kind of edge casing it, like by even worrying, oops, about, I just wanted to show my keyboard. Like how many people are gonna bother doing this? Maybe some, cause then you're going a little fast. I mean, if you kind of want to like, cause part of it, the reason why the speed boost is there is so you can get more points potentially, if you're willing to take the risk and go faster. So, you know, it might even be nice to kind of like pulse it. So that way you can kind of go fast without taking as much risk. But then you kind of don't get the full like walk animation. So I don't know, that's something to think about. Not gonna worry about it today, but as a game designer, it, it interests me as how, how do you solve a problem like that. But anyway, so the walk cycle arms are moving nice. I mean, it's, you know, it's as nice as it is. I feel like, you know, there's some weirdness about it. It kind of doesn't like move very fluidly. And I wonder if I were to finish those keyframes, I'm trying to figure out at what point it looks weird like that. Oh, it's over here. I think it's that this step is a little quick. What if I, um, I mean, it's especially the left one. Oh, but then we don't, hmm. I do wonder if it wouldn't be better I'm going to animate a little bit more. I'm going to keep animating a little more. I think that's going to help it. I'm going to animate a little bit more. Even though it's doing a pretty good job. Something feels a little off. Um but the good news is the blend between the run and the walk is a lot better. So we're at the what point? I don't even know where we're at. High contact, recoil, passing, high contact, so we're at the next contact where the right leg is in the back and the left leg is moving forward. So I'm gonna want this arm, yeah, let's bring it up a little bit. Uh, select the bone edit. I'm going to hit a save just to be safe. Get that right arm. Pumping a little more. Kind of goes at more of like an angle. Rises up a bit. And then the back arm pumps out more. And that hand bends in a bit. So I'm going to keyframe each of these one by one. Less to worry about. I don't feel like dealing with crashes right now. And then I'm curious if I just do that one. Like maybe I'll do the other. There's only a couple more left. But I'm curious if that helps it feel a little smoother. A little bit, yeah. I 
I mean, heck, I say just keyframe the rest of it out. I'm just, there's only two more left. It's not that bad. So then we should be back at recoil or the down position. So I'm gonna grab, yeah, we already have an arm. And this is the right arm. And I want it to be not that different. It's actually pretty similar, the contact. It looks like the hand comes out a little more. But it's not really all that different. What about the other drawing? In the other drawing, it goes up a little bit. So I'll bring it up a little bit. And then the other arm, we pull it back. And maybe flare it out a little bit. But not much. Keyframe all these. I'll do it one by one. Left arm stuff. Right arm stuff. And then finally, we come back to a passing. So we want the arms to be kind of tucked in, kind of like they are. The main difference, I think I'll use this one as a reference. So the right arm will still be out a little bit. But it'll be just tucked in a little more. And the left arm is pretty far down. I mean, almost to the point of being like straight. Is that right? And I'm going to save those keyframes for each one. I want to see if maybe that's a little smoother. It might be. You know, there could be some other things in the timing that will make it better. I don't want to obsess too much. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Oh, that's so much better. Yes. Nice. It was just kind of like ending a little too early before, but now it does like a full back. Good. Good, good, good. Now the arms have pretty well been animated on the run, except for the right arm. So that's the last thing I want to fix here is getting that right arm to kind of move more like we would expect it to. Okay. So let's go to the run animation. <laughs> it's just already all twisted up. You know, there's not much that's different about it. We just kind of got to make it wider. Just like kick it out. Because it's just getting tripped up on itself. Easier said than done. But yeah, if we just 
bring it out like this. Like, you, I might want to just say, pick a spot. Like right here, right? And this is which axis? X? No. Z? Yes. So if I just copy that, you know, we could just say B at Z in this position on each of them. Uh, let me keyframe that first spot there. Move to the next one. And make sure I'm actually on that keyframe. Do the same thing. Uh, we could probably go a little further. So I guess I'll just eyeball it. I'll just push it out. Keyframe it. Move to the next one. It's a pretty good spot. Keyframe it. Move to the next one. Keyframe that. A little tougher since it's in the front. Keyframe that. Just a handful more. Just until it looks a little more even. This alien is scary. Something I kind of want to add, and I'm trying to resist it, because... I've done enough today. <laughs> but I really want to add that debug that makes the, um, the numbers go away. Oh, this one's all weird. This one's really weird. I, I must, you know, maybe I came in here and I messed with the hand as well when I was trying to fix it or something. Or it just is weird. I'd really like to add that debug that makes the um, numbers go away. Really, the debug would be for making the numbers up here. And then at some point, I'd figure out how else to represent that. All right, let's see how this looks. The arm has been kicked out a bit. I don't know how this is going to go. We have to load in where we're not dying immediately. It's a little better. It's a little better. It, it does some things that look a little painful. But it's definitely better. It would seem like... Let me look at it in here. Yeah, right there. Oh, maybe right there. Yeah, it would seem like on the loop. I wonder if we can't Oh, it's so, it's so kind of weird to try to figure out. I feel like on this one, it's like tucking it in too much. No, it's definitely this one at least. So let's kick this arm out more. Maybe like that. better but then we need to kick it out here as well 
And then that might be the hand. I mean, that just like immediately, oh, look. I put the keyframe in the wrong spot. Right there. We had an errant keyframe. And so this one, we want, at least we had an errant keyframe. I think we had a lot of things going on there. Let's kick this out, keyframe it. better. Still kind of comes in a little too far. And kick it out more. Right, I mean, look at that. And that's it trying to blend it with the other, with the beginning position. So if I look at the values behind me over there, where I was behind it, or it was behind me, some of them are changing much more drastically. Is it that X? The Y only goes from about 0.8 down to 0.66. It goes from 0.78 to 0.66. The Z goes from 0.6 to 0.7. The X goes from 0.15 to negative 0.14. So I think that's doing a little too much here. So I might need to bring this X elsewhere. I don't even know if that's going to be enough, though. <laughs> okay, that's that made it worse. That made it considerably worse. You know, maybe I just so this one is at 0 0.72 0 0.65 on the Y. This one is at 0.6, Maybe if I rotate this arm, this hand out a bit, it really just snaps in. Maybe it needs more room to blend. Try making it a little longer still just kind of snaps in. So let me try kicking it out on the first one. I'm a little afraid of what that will do. That's a little better. It still kind of snaps in a weird way. but it's less egregious. But there is a good bit of snapping there. I don't expect perfection here. I just kind of want it to not jump out at me as like something that is off. It's still kind of twisting around a lot. You know, and I wouldn't mind the twisting so much if it was doing it on both sides. But since it's only doing it on one side, it just feels like 
like if something is going wrong. And then on the walk, you know, it doesn't do something like that. It's only on the run. It's very much giving like claymation. So I think maybe something that might help. See how it like rotates inward like that? Either it needs to start rotating inward sooner or this needs to be out more. And so then it's going to do it by the time it gets over here. So now I have to also change that here. Oops, I did it at the wrong time. See how that keyframe is offset a little bit? It's easy to do. That out, bring that down. That's a lot better. Much better. I like it. The numbers are bugging me. I'm happy at this stage with the run and walk cycle. And now I want to make those numbers go away. That's going to be my last act for the night. I'm going to get those numbers to be toggleable. For now, I'm just going to have it be a key. What I really want is like there to be some like on screen thing that comes up that's just me but let's set up a new input i'm gonna call it debug one and it's gonna be can i make it like a hockey is that like a thing I guess I can. But I probably have to code the hotkey. He be smoothing. He be smoothing. He really do. What's up, Pepe? I got to set up this debug. I might want to use the number keys for like a mechanic someday. But for now, we'll just make a debug. So there's a debug button one. Good to see you, Pepe. But yeah, it's coming together. Uh, I'm gonna add a debug because I want I just I want to see it unencumbered by the labels being visible. Where did Lee's go? Where, oh, <laughs> how long have I been gone? How long have I been gone? Oh, you know what? Was it when I pressed control one? That's what did it. Apparently control one is the uh, hotkey for turning my camera on and off. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's, thank you. Thank you for coming in and saving me from being invisible. <laughs> that was a close one. All right. Wow. That's hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, so I would want to set this up in theory on the player. I don't know. I guess I kind of want to put this somewhere else so I can easily, like, turn the debugs on and off. Have it be, like, a script somewhere else. So what if I just make, like, a special node? Make it a control node. It's a special debug node. And I'll call it debug. 
and uh, I'm gonna put a script on there debug script and I'm gonna say I guess we can make an input function do I know how to do an input function I know how to look at an input function that's been done before. I want to say on here. Or this one. Let me look at an input function. I, I know I've done it somewhere before. Do input function. You can use the input function, which will be called whenever the input event occurs. Yeah, let me do that. Input event. If event is action press jump, will that work? And then I'm going to say debug one. And if that is what happens, let's add a label in here. This is getting a little fancy. I just love if it just like popped up with like a message hide hit points. It'd be great if it was like temporary. I don't want to think too hard about it for now. But my imagination definitely wants to have like a fancy like blend in, blend out. That's some severe procrastination behavior right there. Procrastinating stopping working. I don't want to stop. I want to work forever. I haven't done enough work. Give me more. But I just want to make sure it works. So debug script. I'm going to keep that label not visible. This is hide HP. And I'm going to say visible. You might be able to just say hide. Okay, see if that works. It does not. <laughs> Absolutely does not work. Oh, show. I said hide. We want to show it, not hide it. Oh, it still doesn't work. <laughs> Let's try visible. Oh, we need to say true, not show. What am I doing? What am I doing? Trying to do extra stuff at the end. Nice. Okay, that works. So I don't know why I thought show and hide works, but that works. All right, so that 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 input event is good. I do have a desire to have a timer. I still don't know how to create a timer in code. That's something I do want to learn, but we're just going to not. So I'm going to say when you press that, the timer fires. And then I'm going to connect or make the timer. Uh, let's say, yeah, one second. That's fine. One shot. Does one shot mean it just doesn't loop? And then for the node, I want to connect timeout. I really will learn how to do this in code one of these days. I will. Not today. 
and then we want that label to become false. Press it. It's not going away. Do I need to say like start or something? Start that timer. No. Is it timing out at all? I feel like we're not starting it. Maybe I don't want the one shot. Or maybe I want auto start. Maybe I want auto start, but then it's gonna do it right away. So there it hid, but I think that's because I pressed it before the auto start ended. So what I guess gotta figure out is how to start it. How you start a timer? GD script start timer. I'm gonna, I'm about to ask Chat GPT. Start. But that's something different. Chat GPT, just help me get this so I can sort this out. So I said ChatGPT.com. It's okay. That works. Uh. How do I start the timer in the input function? Oh, now it's going to have me do a whole thing. I mean, you don't have to do all that. Timer.start. It's creating a whole variable. We don't have to do all that. But whatever, go ahead. All right, ChatGPT, whatever you say, I'm at your mercy. Make it so. Oh, see, this is why I don't like when it does all these things. See, it be doing stuff that don't work. Get on my face, ChatGPT. What if I set it to auto start? I'm surprised because start like did show up as an option. All right, all right, all right. That's too much, that's too much. I'll let it all go, guys. We know it works. Another day, another day. When I'm not tired, I'm trying to figure stuff out. No timer, no timer, no timer. No timer. I'm gonna learn how to do timers outside of the node tree one day. Uh, so what I really wanted to do is hide all the body parts, labels. So I'm going to get that awesome code Psychonic Joe helped me put together earlier. I think. I guess I don't really need it now that I think about it. So I just need to refer to all these labels in this instance. If I say, I guess I do want to say get node. Really, I want any of these, like whatever they are. This is actually kind of what I want. Actually, this is what I want. I do want this code that we got from earlier. Absolutely, 100%. Because this way we can skip specifying each and every one. It's very convenient. So I want to get that node and then just say, this might be like too many things. Because it's going to have to choose all of them. Maybe it'll just work. <laughs> Crash. 
out of bounds get oh so i need to say player slash alien at least it might still not be able to access it hmm player alien armature skeleton 3d alien then all, whatever these are and then hit these damage labels hmm oh we can copy the node path right player alien armature skeleton 3d Alien underscore. So it's saying, <clears throat> excuse me, out of bounds get index packed string array. What does that mean again? <laughs> what does that mean again? I forgot how we solved that before. It might be. All right, fine. I'll just type out each one. So what if I do type out each one? Suppose I do, and we don't do it all this way. And in fact, I just cut all this out. And then I say like alien arm right, like this. It doesn't like that. Only identifier attribute access and subscription access can be used as an assignment target. What? What? Let's try get note again. So this should, if this works, this should only hide the right arm one uh inbound set index visible null instance of the value type of bool hmm i mean it definitely has that a little trickier than i thought it would be what if we do it like this this is kind of ridiculous what if we do it like this? Oh my gosh, I missed so many messages. What the heck? How long have I been missing messages? The last 10 minutes? Sorry, Pepe. Pepe, dang it. I'm sorry. Your stream was five minutes delayed. My brain was 10 minutes delayed. You finished your Batman. Nice. Got him game ready with his poly count going from 2.2 million to 60,000 now. He needs some work in Blender and Subsurface Painter, and he's done. I can't wait to see it. I hope you share it in the Discord. Share it in the Discord. Unless you don't want to, but I'd really like to see it. You're proud of how he's coming along for your first full body sculpt. Yeah, nice. Go, Pepe. Normally, timers are done in either Delta time or on frames past, but I don't know how Godot works. Yeah. Yeah, it should work. I'm just not, like, calling it correctly. I don't know. I'm just not calling it correctly. I hear what you're saying though, and actually that might be, that might be, you're, you might be right. I might need to set something like that. I gotta learn timers. Thanks for the tip though. I gave up on it. <laughs> uh, Stormrun just got internet. Surprise, you're still going. I thought I was watching a rerun for a minute. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, the stream delay happens. Your answer your question's already solved. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Especially on YouTube. It's really easy to have happen. Yeah, I'm just trying to set up a debug thing. I, I was I, I, I technically finished my animation task, but now I want to see the animation without those uh, hit point numbers there because they're just annoying me. I want to appreciate the animation without them, but I don't want to just turn the numbers off. I want to be able to toggle them. So I'm, uh, I'm doing the most, and I'm just trying to set up a little debug key. Not so little, evidently. Uh, I have a kind of roundabout idea. And it may be too much for my tired, hungry brain to handle. But I'm going to try it anyway. I'm too... 
I'm too stubborn not to. So if I put, if I make a class script, an entire class script, that's so ridiculous. I should just save this for another time, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm surprised this doesn't work. Like what it's talking about, invalid set index visible on base. Like why? Like it's there. It's there. Why you can't find it? If I copy the node path and I paste it, I mean, that's the dang node path. One is left, one is right, but invalid set index. But we know this works. It's just like not seeing it as what it is. And I don't really know why. Node not found. Relative to root main scene debug. Oh. So I need to somehow. I mean, I feel like that would be get tree, right? Doesn't get tree bypass the. Oh, it says get node. Maybe I need to say get tree. Too many arguments. Expected at most zero, but received one. How do you do this again? ChatGPT, don't mess this up for me. You got this, ChatGPT. How do I reference a node outside of its tree using get tree get node or whatever <laughs> are you sleepy you would reference a damage label node using get node like this why are you always creating variables that's not gonna work that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Well, I mean, certainly nothing happened. Oh, we got G Wiz in the house. Whoa, we got G Wiz in the house. Now I know we're going to solve this problem. We're going to solve it like that. Like that. Um, welcome, G Wiz. So, yeah, uh, Really, all I'm trying to do is hide these labels. Uh, so there are these 3D labels that are around the character. And I want to hide them. So they are these right here, these like instanced nodes. Or they're part of this instance scene right here, these 3D labels. And, whoops, I made myself disappear. I'm a little sleepy. I need a G-Wiz in here. Uh, and so I'm trying to control this from like this whole other script uh, that is on this control node over here. And I just want to press a button if this button is pressed and hide it. And so I'm just trying to reach that node that's all the way down here, nested so far, so very far away from this debug control node. I just wanna grab this and then there's a bunch of them. So the other part of it is, is that there's a bunch of them, right? And so what I was doing was using the split function to help grab those, right? But that didn't work great. So I'm fine with just listing each one out if I have to, but I wanted to use the split function right here. So that way we could just say alien underscore arm left, alien underscore arm right, alien underscore body, alien underscore leg left, skip all those 
identifiers here after the underscore and then so it would just go to each one but I that didn't work well so I was fine with just doing you know like a regular reference we say player alien forget all this stuff and I just do the name of it who cares I just wanted to implement this and move on get that damage label and then tell it to not be visible but doing that tells me that uh, it's invalid set index visible on base null instance with a value type bool. So I don't know what that's about. Are they always going to be in the same scene? They, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Press control drag over the label to your script. Control drag? So it is instanced. I see what you're saying. But since it's in an instant scene, so I have this instant scene over here. I guess I could do it like this. So it won't let me drag it. And that's not me pressing control. If I press control drag, nothing happens. I come to the main scene and press control drag. Also nothing happens. On ready variable. Oh, oh. Try that before your functions. Yes, you know, Psychonic Joe said that earlier. That's how we got the split function to work up here, was we set it up in on ready. And that's so. Make, mark the following property is assigned when the node is ready. Values for these properties are not assigned immediately when the node is initialized and instead are computed and stored right before. I, I want, how am I gonna know to do this? All right, let's do it. Expect a variable name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, uh, path, uh, label, damage, label, we'll call it damage label. And so then we'll say damage label visible false. Oh, equals false. What does that do? Same thing. Same thing. And also you can do hide or show instead of, oh, that's how you do it. I was trying to figure out how to do the hide. I didn't have the parenthesis. That was the problem. But it's the same thing. I wonder if it's like because it's an instance, same thing. Null instance on null instance. Dang. Dang. I will wait. Uh, Storm Run said, they say my internet problem is because they are installing fiber, but hey, don't work at night on that stuff. Yeah, right. Are they supposed to like do it like at like 4 a.m. or something? ISP's always got some kind of story. You must be tired too. You thought it's a dog label instead of damage label. I am tired. I should have stopped, but like, I just like, oh, I just want to see it with these gone. And I want this debug button. I want it. Yeah, the arms are fixed a little. They are. Dog label does sound fun. I've made a section in the games for you discussion on your Discord. Let's go. That's the second one you've done. Hopefully you commit longer to this. That's all right. Oh yeah, add them in there. Fill it up. Put as many as you need. We start games, we come back to them. That's how it goes. That's game dev. Uh, hopefully you commit longer, but the Batman's in there. Any feedback, welcome. Uh, be as mean as you want. You know no one in our Discord is going to be mean. I'll remove one of these. 
Let's see what happens. Same thing. What if I just say player? I see what you're saying, though. It should work, because it's like looking up one level. Oh, it's still just... Maybe I need to do like a slash there. I had an extra dot. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I still need to do the player, though. <gasps> it worked! Okay, now I need to analyze what happened so I can ever do it again. Thank you. Beautiful. The extra dot. Yeah, there was an extra dot. Also forgot to do the player part. But that's fine. Super nice. Gee whiz. Guys, by the way, if you don't know Gee whiz, you really should subscribe to Gee whiz's channel. Gee whiz is doing a game jam right now. A Christmas game jam. Gee whiz uh, does live streams of Godot. Jiwiz makes amazing tutorials for Godot. Like, Jiwiz did not ask for this, but I appreciate people who help me. And sometimes people who help me have great YouTube channels. And so I gotta let you know, hit that subscribe over there, ring that bell, because uh, Jiwiz has some good content. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your help, Jiwiz. My goodness. So now I'm, okay, well now I'm curious to try the split. And maybe that's ambitious, over ambitious even. But I kind of want to see if that, I feel like it won't, all right? I just want to say, I feel like that's not how it'll work in here. But I really want to try it. And so I'm going to try it. So if I come from here, yeah, because look, it's not part of this anymore, right? So maybe if I did, maybe if I did get node, and did it like this, there's no way it works. Like we just broke it. We just broke the crap out of it, right? Out of bounds, get index one on base. Okay. All right, all right. Well, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. So then what I have to do is we got to set an on ready for each one. So this is damage label arm left. And I got to do it for each one. It's, it's a little hacky. But you know what? For now... It'll do. We need five of the things. Arm right. Give me body. Give me leg left. Give me leg right. And then I can finally toggle this. Well, it's not a toggle. So I, but I think I could just say, like an exclamation point or something. I don't know. There might be some way to make that work. So arm left. This one is arm right. This one is body. This one is leg left. This one is leg right. And then I just get the joy of doing all of these. There's no way that exclamation point thing works. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Leg right, and a body. Okay, the exclamation point was a mistake. Oh yeah, show. Oh, so you're saying, hmm. Intriguing. I will do it. I will do this. I feel like this exclamation point is being used wrong. Okay. 
fix how wrong I'm using or to make a toggle do damage. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Interesting. Oh man, she was really does no good. She was great. You know, I I I know I'm a long ways off from this, but I aspire to like be able to just like jump into Godot and be like, all right, let's create something. You know, just feel like I've got the tools at my fingertips and I can just like bounce around and do what I want. And I feel like when I watch someone like Jiwiz uh, or Jackie Codes and I see them in Godot, I'm just like, look at them, look at them just going. They just like, it's like a painter with a paintbrush just like using the tools that's that's me someday not today not tomorrow <laughs> someday seems like i know what i'm doing for the most part just a few things to learn but you got it progress is being made it doesn't help that i'm always pushing myself to learn more but yeah <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing okay all right all right <laughs> Well then, man, I truly have no hope. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. All right, so uh, we've got damage, label, arm, and we wanna say it equals, we wanna set IC, so we're, ch we're updating the variable to be the opposite of, it's technically the opposite, to be the opposite of visible. And I guess unless it's already set that way, it'll know to toggle it. Or the opposite of whatever visible is set to. Whatever visible is set to, do the opposite of that. Gotcha. Okay. Understood. So copy this equals that visible copy this equals that visible copy this equals that visible and copy this equals that visible all right. Probably should spell visible right. Might help. See what we got. Crash. Invalid get index vis visible. Invalid get index visible on base bool. Boo. Boo. I'm booing the code, not you. I'm just booing the code. That's how I feel. I just wing it and hope it works. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Perchance. G Wiz is here. You're gonna get a night. Get it? Cause you're Batman? I got you. I got you. Yeah, good night, Pepe. Good night, everyone. One or good evening. Have fun with Godot. Sorry I couldn't hang around long, but hope you have a lovely holiday break. Yeah, likewise to you. And so does everyone else. Thanks, Pepe. Appreciate it. You're so nice. Can't wait to see your Batman that you made in the Discord. Uh, okay, so Visible doesn't like that. It's not a fan of Visible. But it is like recognizing the Boolean thing. Well, I could also set it up the long way. I could also set it up the long way. Invalid get index visible. We could say, so just do like one, right? Hide it. So we know this works. There that hides, it did hide. Do that for all of them. And then, well, 
I mean, that won't do an opposite of, I guess not. What if I just do one? If I just do visible with the exclamation point? I wonder if that'll work. Maybe, but I died too quickly. I just don't do nothing. How odd. What if I just do one of these? Damage label arm left equals that. Such a tangent. Let's see if ChatGPT can fix it. Let's see if ChatGPT can fix it. Probably not. I often find that ChatGPT cannot. You have a JavaScript website that reads like 20,000 lines in a few seconds, so I think it can be long without performance issues. That's true. Sometimes, you know, it's like this like goal of clean code. If only the code was clean, it would be better. <laughs> would it? Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, ChatGPT. Resolve the error in the code. Resolve the following error in the code below. Okay, code below error right here. Fix it, chat GPT. You're trying to use visible property on a Boolean value. In Godot, visible property is typically used with nodes, not Boolean variables. It seems like you want to toggle the visibility. You should use the visible property on these nodes directly, rather than trying to assign a Boolean value to them. Here's the correct code. It doesn't look that different. Oh, putting the visible first. Oh, did I misread what was said earlier? Or was it just understandably mistyped? The second one. Okay, so I think we can just say we have to define the Boolean first. I like don't believe you, ChatGPT. But at the same time, you speak with such confidence, as you often do, ChatGPT, that I'm inclined to at least try it. Yes! With the power of GWiz, with the power of ChatGPT, and the power of you, the power of me, we have achieved on and off hit points. And now, at long last, I can toggle them on and I can toggle them off. And we can appreciate the running and the walking unencumbered by the awkwardness of hit points that while useful for understanding uh, what's happening in the game are not yet pretty. It is not yet designed in a way that is pretty. We've had some good suggestions. We've had some good ideas about how to make it uh, appear more immersively the damage but you know what today's not the day to worry about that just appreciate the whole thing with no more numbers the animation doesn't uh, flail anymore did you fix it i did yeah i wanted to try to start the animation in t pose but it um i wasn't able to actually get the blender file to export it into t pose which is really weird because i did a lot of things including things like storm run had pointed out before and it, actually the model is in t pose if i just drag it in but like it it's not updating it anyway this is a little off of what you're asking but <laughs> it was part of that journey so like if i drag the model in it's in t pose so that was great but it's not actually updating it so that's fine so what I ended up doing was I um, I just animated 
the arms on the walk cycle, that fixed a lot. And then on the run cycle, I just modified the arm that was being a little weird. I just tweaked it so it wasn't weird. So really, you know, it, it, it just needed, I think, to not be in that forward position. It was like too much of a switch. So now if I spam uh, the speed button, we don't get weird flickering, whatever position we're in, because it's just a similar enough transition that we don't have to worry about it doing the most to switch between them. No, I still have some concerns about the fact that when you tap it, you just like, like that seems very silly to me. That's a challenge for another day. But I'm very happy uh, with the way it came together. Yeah, it came together good. You know, is it the like perfect animation I'd ever want in a game at the end of my life to say that this is my proudest moment? No. But I'm very proud that there's more animation than there was, you know, seven hours ago, eight hours ago. This was a freaking zombie skating across the land. But look at him go now. Well, if we can keep the arms from breaking off. I didn't have time to do a one-legged hop. So uh, I might do that next week. Or I might do that on a Monday member stream. I do do the member streams every Monday. Uh, if you join up on YouTube or Patreon, you'll get access to those live streams. Uh, so make sure you check out the YouTube membership or the Patreon if you're interested in those streams. I use them for art streams. I might use it for animation. I kind of want to do sound. Like the more I look at this, the more I just keep thinking it needs like a thum, 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 like some like, you know, monster. Cause this is big. Like look, we got this like little house and this giant monster. And with that movement, it's just, it's missing some, it's missing some thunderousness. You know what I mean? It's just kind of missing that. So we'll see. Uh, the animation is a huge milestone. Now just regular stuff will seem like a lot was done. Yeah! Oh, I appreciate that. It is a big milestone. Yeah, it really is nice to like see it come together because it was just kind of frustrating to be showing off the game and it just like doesn't even animate. Still a lot of work to do and I'm gonna be here every Wednesday and Thursday uh, doing these live streams, working on this game trying to get it done we got a long way to go but we'll get there uh tomorrow is game jam time uh so check out the one hour game jam on the itch.io page it there's not a lot of people who joined because i forgot to make it a public game jam until today i set it up uh, a week ago but i forgot to make it public so <laughs> so uh I, I have a feeling we'll still have some folks come through but yeah that's tomorrow that's every friday uh, other than that, if you're watching this after the live stream, hello, welcome, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, you're most welcome, Storm Run. Appreciate you coming through and helping me as much as you did and hanging out, keeping me company. I'm glad your internet's back. Uh, hello, whoever's watching this after the live stream. I'm currently flying across the land. Uh, Merry Christmas. Hey, Kai, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you for being a YouTube member and supporting the channel. I appreciate you for that. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, if you're watching this after the live stream, uh, you can tap or click in the bottom left to watch the last episode in this series, or you can tap and click in the right side to see the next episode. I'll see you there. You're welcome. Thank you for your help, Psychonic. Bye.